hands, it's time for those most famous words in motorsports. Travers, stop your engines! <laughs> One of the fastest, most technical and demanding racetracks in North America plays host to round six of the RAs.com Pro Series of Road Racing. We are here at Road America, this four mile, 14 corner racetrack, which creates so many memories and also a ton of excitement. Robin Miller called it the true test of drivers at in North America and Really, it's going to be an interesting day for operation today. Will Vincent alongside Yoni Backman in the Glacier TV booth bringing you all the coverage of qualifying, pre-race and the race itself uninterrupted. And we're currently having a look at qualifying time. At qualifying lap at the moment. No drivers have yet set a qualifying time. They've got themselves 15 minutes in which to do so. They will have three laps, which really gives them about two attempts to set their fastest lap which will put them on the grid for this, the sixth round of the Pro Series. And Yoni, Road America is a very, very tough track, especially in qualifying when there's a ton of time to gain, but you've got to push yourself to the absolute limit. Yeah, and this is one of the tracks where you don't want to push you to the absolute limit because uh, the the inside curves, which you have to uh, cut heavily, and the exit curves, they're, they're not forgiving at all, even though they're not high, but uh, especially with the F1, with the speeds they carry through those curbs, it's it's very very unforgiving and just the slightest mistake it, it's not even just putting your car into a slide it's about putting sending it into the barricade so uh, it's going to be fun to see uh, who's going to who's be who's going to be willing to gamble it and uh, risk it all uh, to get the clean lap and uh, if it's a clean lap if it's a fast one and we're going to go on board with Emil Spindel as he's coming to set his first lap of the day he is coming out the final corner so we'll go on board of him as he comes up the hill and welcoming in marius into the booth as well mate has got a bet marius very very good afternoon to you but this is a fast on track good afternoon guys yeah and i'm very much looking forward to this race philip island always prepare uh, sorry rod america always um, looking to do some classic racing here and uh, it's been proven in the dwc that it's one of the most fantastic race tracks and I can't imagine anything else than an interesting race after the last few rounds. Uh, not really been particularly boring, but not exactly interesting. So this is going to be interesting for sure. Spindel working his way now down into turn number five. This has caused a lot of controversy with these drivers. It's just how much runoff you take off on the way in and then on the exit as well. Spindel nicely with inside the track boundaries there underneath the Corvette bridge into turn number six. You really have to take that corner slowly. The car always wants to pull away from you flat out now. Turn number seven, and then this is my least favorite corner on the racetrack. Turn eight, really got to slow it down left hand, and very slow. Got to get a good exit, however, as you go underneath the speed rail bridge into the carousel. Pretty much, he's going to be flat out in qualifying. Should we see Spindel's car moving around there in the middle of the racetrack, trying to get himself a nice line as he now comes down on this run to perhaps the most famous corner on the racetrack, Canada Corner, where they say, you know, if you go off the racetrack, you pretty much are going to end up in Canada. Take it as fast as possible. You break late. You use that runoff curve on the exit. Spindel doing that nicely now. He's just going to flick that car to the left-hand side. Just one 
more corner left to go for him. Break late here, you really want to get it before the tarmac changes, however. Run nicely on the exit, a little bit of a wiggle from Spindell there as he comes up the hill. And his first qualifying attempt of the day is going to be a 1 minute 34.313, putting him currently top identical time to Davy Decor. And it just shows once again how close this grid really is and uh, we haven't got the qualifying finish but we can already say that this is not over yet and it's just again really close and it's it's one of the longer tracks really it's uh, no comparison to Phillip Island or Road Atlanta or some of the shorter tracks but even with lap times around the 1 minute 30 mark the guys are just within 100 for 10th even. And with Emil Spindel normally we say it's driving set to qualifying time first who will get time itself. Spindell set that time later and even though you see it to the closest thousandth of a second, the R racing timing is to the nearest ten thousandth. So that is why Emma Spindell is probably just a couple of tenth of a thousandth faster than David Decor. So Monaco DG Filo going into third place provisionally in the 62 car with a time of 1 minute 34.318. Enzo Benito going fourth and then Richie Stanaway who's won the last two races. He is currently sat in the fifth position. He is going to do his second attempt of the day. And he's working his way down into turn number five at the moment. Um, I have to say though, Monaco DG Filo once again right up there, as is David Corps, as is Emil Spindel, as is Enzo Benito, as is Richie Stanaway. Those top five drivers really have become the class of the field these past couple of weeks. Yeah, Monaco Filo currently in third position, like you said, has only completed his first lap, however. Um, 318 for him. Once again, just 8,000 down the pole position. Emil Spindel and David Kopp still absolutely got the same time here. And between 4th and 5th position, which is Enzo Bonito and Richie Stanaway, there is also just a 2,000 second gap. So it's, it's a lot less than blink of an eye, really, between those two drivers. And they are not even 2 tenths off the pole, so nothing is really dealt there. However, to 8th position, which is currently Max Del Orco, he's the last one in the 1 minute 34 mark, and he's already down by about 7 tenths here, so it's not exactly as close overall. However, the whole grid, currently 20 drivers set the time 1.2 seconds apart. However, we're calculating that um, it's going to be about 1.5 seconds from the slowest to fastest. Still good, but the track is just a bit longer, 6.44 kilometers here, so uh, it's quite logical that it's a bit more spread out here. Indeed, yeah, and we've always seen the top um, drivers very close, and there's a bit of a gap to that mid-pack, and then a bit of a gap down to the lower pack as well. We're looking on board with Richie Stanaway, the winner of the last two races in the RRacing.com Pro Series of Road Racing, making his way now down into turn number five. This is his third and final lap that second lap as a warm-up lap he's into turn five now nice line nice exit touching a little bit of the dirt there as he comes out down underneath that corvette bridge into turn number six and stand away a little bit of a wiggle once again that is going to cost him we are talking about thousands of a second that really could hurt stand away's time we'll get an update of that as he comes past line top five still as they are emma spindell from david cops from modgar dg velo from enzo benito from richie Stanaway. they are your top five drivers spin down into corpse setting the same time but spin down um, given the pole position for the time being, this is very similar actually to the 1997 European Grand Prix. Um, just hope that a third driver doesn't do the same. Stanaway now heading his way down into Canada Corner. Just a couple more corners left to go for him. He's got to nail this now. He is a little bit wide down turning, nicely on exit, however, a little bit of a wiggle as he comes up now into these final couple of corners. You really have to hassle the car through here. The track points to fall away, then break as late as possible, as I've said before. And a second part of lap, a lot better from Stanaway. We're going to get his time as he comes past the line. What's it going to be for Richie Stanaway? It was a 1 minute 34.5 in his first lap. This time, a 1 minute 34.225, and he goes fastest. Yeah, Richie Stanaway setting the car on the pole position here. He's done his third lap of the session, and if you're not familiar with the rules, you may only do three laps. However, a fast lap is only two, as uh, when you cross the line, of course, starting your first lap, you end it by starting the second one, and then going an out lap, and uh, basically you've only got two fast laps by that. Stanaway completing his last possible lap there, setting the car on provisional pole position. We've got about four and a half minutes to go here, and also Emil Spindel is on his fast lap and about to cross the line. Oh, he wiggled it, he lost it on the final, final corner into the wall there for Emil Spindel. Disappointment for him. He was setting himself up for a blistering, blistering lap there. He lost it 
in the final corner. We'll get yourselves a replay of that to see what happened to him. Benito, we'll have a look at him, however. He is working his way up to the line for Benito. It is going to be a 1 minute 34. Um, in fact, no, he's doing his fast lap now. We'll go on board with him as he comes down into turn number one. But there's a spin down, man. It's disappointing on the last corner of his last lap. He just got that wiggle. Yeah, and Emil is complaining about internet connection issues in the spectator chat, so we hope that he can do this race and not time out. However, Emil, of course, completing his last possible lap with that. No more laps for him, no more laps for Davide Korb. However, Moga Filo is, on, uh, is going to go on his fast lap this time by, and Enzo Bonito misses the hairpin a little bit there. So he is on his fast lap, but with that mistake, he shouldn't be able to um, do a faster lap. Anyway, Yudai Narumi not set a, first, um, uh, a fast lap in his first turn. However, his third lap right now is setting a 1 minute 34.6 as Enzo Bonito failed his lap. Yeah, Enzo Benito got it wrong in turn six as well. He decided that lap just wasn't worth caring about. He's brought that car back down to the pit road. Mogga DGP, however, into the final corner. He set pole position. Let's not forget, at Philip Island one week ago, he comes up the hill. What's it going to be for Enzo? For, sorry, for Mogga DGP, DGP is about to start his final lap of the day. He's got to nail every single corner of this four mile racetrack into turn number one. Very nicely hung in the entry and exit curve for him. And Philo, a very good start to lap. He's really got him to get himself like, a good drive out of turn two to set himself up for the back straightaway. And Philo, once again, looking calm under pressure. Yeah, not only Philo looking good here, but uh, it's just going to be the same situation again. For example, Christian Lorente, Vasily Taichev, seventh and eighth position here, are pretty much half a second apart from 23rd. And 23rd, Jason Lovick, currently 1 minute 35.2. So, uh, well, the mid-pack basically just got bigger and bigger. We've got a smaller pack at the front, really. Uh, only the top five drivers running a 1 minute 34.5. Then we've got Yuda and Rumi with a 0.6. And then we're starting the 7 and 8. And um, basically, these times are all within 100 for thousands even. For example, 16, 17, 18 are all within 1 tenth. And it's just, uh, sorry, 100 even. So... It's getting closer and closer, and um, in, if you're on a fast lap right now, a couple of drivers are, even with just going a bit faster, really, just a glimpse of an eye, um, you're going to get one or two positions easily. And Philo, a little bit of a wiggle there through Canada, but not too much to worry about. Just a couple more corners left to go for him. Now he's got to nail that final corner. Don't do a spin down. Hold it nicely on the exit curve. He does that up the hill from what got DG Philo. What is it going to be for him as he comes across the line for the final time? It was a woman of 34.318. Can he improve? And Hold he position. Does. Yes, he does. It is the ball position, and I've been wondering if he's going to complete this lap, and yes, he did, so there must have been the reason to that. He takes the ball position here, half a tenth, in fact, in front of Richie Stanaway. 1 minute 34.173, and with M uh, Miguel Martin completing his last lap and setting the car on the 22nd spot, we're going to get uh, the final results in just a few seconds here, as all the drivers have completed their laps, and the qualifying results seem final. Indeed, yes, we have set ourselves... 26 drivers have set themselves a qualifying time. We expect Wes Richards to start once again from the rear of the field. But Mudgar DG Philo, 1 minute 34.1. 7-3, about 52 one thousandths of a second ahead of Richie Stanaway in second. A repeat of what happened one week ago at Phillip Island. Emma Spindell, he had himself a blistering lap. We will get ourselves a replay of what happened in that final corner for him um, in a 33 car. And he, um, a say, 1 minute 34.310 in the same time for David Corpse in fourth. Enzo Benito will round out your top five. And then Yudo Narumi in sixth, Vasily Zaitov in seventh, Christian Lorente in eighth, Jesper Pedersen in ninth and how could I say rounding out your top 10 and I have to say once again on pole Modgo DG Filo really working under pressure yeah and you can basically just uh, say pressure out loud there you've got two laps basically to set the fastest time of the session and even with that putting a lap down under 1 minute 34.3 or 0.4, like the top four drivers here did, is absolutely brilliant. However, Philho just managing to get the couple of hundreds, the couple of thousands out of his lap, making it absolutely perfect and getting the pole position here. However, around the 10th position here, we've got Christian Lorente, like I said, on 8th position, 8.23 for him, 1 minute 34, followed by a couple of guys, and from Lorente down by about two tenths, 
is um, the 18th position, the only terminus. So 10 people within two tenths, and we've got a six and a half kilometers long circuit. So a one and a half minute lap time, of course, being one of the fastest circuits in the season. But this is just incredible. Indeed, yeah. And I have to say, literally thousands separating some of these drivers then you have to feel for some of them as well who lost out on that last lap as i said emma's been down he'd set himself by our watch what would have been very close for pole position coming into that final corner we're going to get ourselves uh yeah having a look from canada corner now so he's got himself a couple more corners left to go um and this is on his final lap working his way into his final couple of corners it was very nice actually through turn 13 and then into 14 he just caught that exit an entry curve even a little bit that unsettled the car and we'll get the super slow-mo there on that as well and then it just meant that he couldn't get the power down nicely got a bit of a wiggle on the exit and Marius we're talking a couple of inches too far to the right there and that was the difference between Emma Brindell going for pole position and then start this race in third yeah and especially with car of course it, it's got quite a big amount of downforce but we're still talking about 740 750 horsepower here as we're going to see what happened to Emil Spindler there and it just shows how difficult it really is to get the power down how difficult it is to get a good exit out of a turn and especially with the several different grip levels for example like this in out of the last turn you're going to go on the curb on the left which is already less grippy than the track and if you're going off the curb you're basically already in the grass and Whilst turning, getting your rear wheels on the grass, you basically just add one plus one, and you've got the result to that, and that's exactly what happened to Emil. Indeed, yeah. We've got ourselves about 17 minutes before the drop of the green flag for this, the sixth round of the Arizona at Pro Series of Road Racing. You are watching and listening to the Glacier TV pre-race show. Qualifying is in the book to run through your field. Modgar DG Filo, his second pole position in a row. 1 minute 34.173, taking pole position from Richie Stanaway. And then Emil Spindel in third. David Cops in fourth. Enzo Benito rounding out your top five. And then Yudo Rumi in sixth. Um, Vasily Zaitov seventh. Christian Lorenta in eighth. Jasper Pedersen in ninth. Hal Cordasso rounding out your top ten. Then Simon Cattell eleventh. Paul Ilbrank twelfth. Ryan Terpstra thirteenth. Max Delorco in fourteenth. Timo Evenen in fifteenth. Pierre Brito in 16th, PJ Sturgill 17th, Yoni Tamala in 18th, Marcus Gatton in 19th, Thiago Othero running out your top 20. Rest results coming up on your screen momentarily. And I think you're pretty much nailed it on the head. I mean, the field was only separated by 1.3 seconds, Marius, but the gaps you had, you know, from Simon Cattell in 11th all the way down to Timo Evening in 15th, separated by less than one tenth of a second. And then you had another five drivers separated by less than a tenth of a second from 16th through 20th. Very tight field. Yeah, really. And it just shows, for example, Simon Cattell in 11. Uh, we've got his teammate Jason Lovett down in 24th. And Lovett and Cattell have had a brilliant race on Indianapolis where they both scored inside the top 10. In fact, um, even in the top five. So um, it just shows how close this field is. And for example, Jason Lovett, I'm pretty sure he, he could have had the lap in the 134 mark. But with a 1 minute 35.2, just outside of that, he's down by about 15 positions to a lap, which has only been about a half a second quicker. So it just shows one little mistake, costing you about two tenths, is uh, yeah, five, six, seven positions, and you're just losing so much, and you have to keep your concentration up. We're showing you the point standings right now, and it's just a matter of yeah, getting the lap together, and even if you don't, you just have to focus, you have to end your lap, because just getting more and more mistakes into it is not gonna help you. And with these little hundred mistakes, you might even lose two positions. So with a semi-good lap, you might still continue it, get a good last sector, get a, a good last two sectors. That might even help you to get the positions you need. But uh, with a bad lap, probably never want to end it so close as, uh, as this is. Indeed, yes. And the say the point standing is coming up on your screen momentarily. Um, three drivers separated by one point in the battle for the Pro Series of Road Racing. Um, we've been here before. We've been in situations where there has been drivers very closely matched on the racetrack and in the point standings. However, um, you know, we've got ourselves Enzo Benito, one point ahead of my god DG Filo and Richie Stanaway. Emma Spindel, who's looking to bounce back after he fell down into the fifth position. You've really got to say this is a critical race in the chase for the championship. 
Yeah, it really is. And even if you look down further for the price range in the top five, um, you've got people like Andrea Baldi, Paul Elbring, Yoni Terminal, Joao Pino down in 15th to 18th position. And they are also close together. You remember 50 points for the win here. So if you take 50 points, that catapults you from 60 points to 110. And that might even be 10 positions. So even the championship is as close as the qualifying standings right here. Simon Gattel, Temu Iwon and the teammates currently being the only ones outside of the top seven here not scoring 100 points or more in fact if one of them can just capitalize on a little star crash today it might even catapult them directly into the top five as it's just as close as in the qualifying standings like i said and um, a couple of points more or less might even get you into the top 10 or not and when you consider the fact as well that this is the last race before the christmas break um, we've got two weeks off and then we return at watkins glen in three weeks time i mean it's Momentum-wise, you've got to get yourself a good position going to those last three races, which are all very difficult racetracks. Watkins Glen, Spa, Suzuka. You know, you've got to be there to have the shot for the championship. And to do that, you've got to get yourself a good race yet again here today. Yeah, really. And uh, with a lot of time, um, OK, it's Christmas, of course. You have to take your week off. Enjoy the celebrations. Uh, enjoy the holidays and just uh, yeah, get um, busy with something else than racing. But you still have more time than you have within the weeks. And it's just um, one week to another. You came from a track like Phillip Island. You go to a track like Road Atlanta, for example. It's uh, uh, Road America, sorry. It's something completely different, really. And you just have to not only change your driving, you have to change your whole setup, you have to get something running in a couple of days and then get the practice in for the race really and seven days is not really that much. However, you said it, we've got the Christmas break coming and um, for the next track the drivers have got a little bit more time to practice. However, also the viewers might enjoy something coming from iRacing for the Christmas, especially here. 18th of December there's a new car coming to the service, the McLaren MP4 12C, one of the most anticipated cars in the service, already being high by the staff as one of the most brilliant handling cars here so you really can look forward to this one we've got a little trailer coming up for you as we've got about eight minutes of time when we're going online again with the cars joining the grid on the track and we've got one good race coming up to you enjoy the trailer and enjoy for something you might want to get for christmas
Well, welcome back to Road America, set in Elkhart Lake, America, and this four-mile, 14-corner racetrack playing host to the sixth round of the Irish.com Pro Series of Road Racing. For those of you who have just joined us, good afternoon. Will Vincent and Mario Scott and Beck, and along for the ride, your top five drivers for this race will be Modgar DG Piero, pole position once again, Richie Stanaway in second, Emil Spindel in third, David Corpse in fourth, and Enzo Benito rounding out your top five. Marius. We'll talk about a couple of parts of this racetrack very quickly, and we've got to go straight away immediately to the start. Um, yeah. The start of this race is going to be crazy. It is, and uh, I don't know if you guys can remember the start from the DWC race just about half a year ago. Uh, I can remember it was quite some mayhem. Uh, I remember Luke McLean uh, messed up the start a little bit and just basically flew to the right, crashing out several other cars, and that was just uh, one of the biggest mayhems we had in the DWC. And, um, well, the start track is, um, uh, the start grid basically on its own is one of the most narrow ones, so you're not exactly um, yeah, far apart from your opponents, you're also not exactly far apart from the grass on the left side and the wall on the right side. So um, these cars having 740, 750 horsepower, of course you need to get the traction down. It's not really easy if you haven't got traction control, you haven't got any starting control. So it's just your feet basically controlling what the power does and um, getting the car slightly sideways is okay on a track where you've got a wide starting grid. Spa, for example, you can go four or five wide even. And going sideways here or messing up the start really either puts you directly into the wall or directly into an opponent. And if you nail the start really, you can't really overtake, you can't really capitalize. So if you're in fourth, fifth row and you get a good start and the two guys ahead, if you get a bad one, you're basically just stuck. And then you've also got, you know, that run down turn five. It's a wide corner. It's a possibility to overtake. But action will always happen there in the race. I want to bring actually back to pit road. Because pit road here, it's fast, but it's also slightly difficult. You've got to nail an uphill braking zone to get into pit road. And then getting out, you you blend into turn one on the very inside. Pit road here, as always, going to be very crucial. Yeah, especially with this one, you said it's really steep uphill. It's the same uh, level of steepness really going on the same track. It's just about um, yeah a couple of meters to the right. You don't really see where the pit limit starts. So you basically just fly over the crest. You have to remember your braking point at some point. You, you basically just brake and you only see the cones marking the pit entry when it's too late, really. So if you nail the braking point, you put in the pit limiter, there's the cone, and there's the point where you need to have slowed down for the pit speed. Going as fast as, uh, going faster than that, of course, giving you a drive-through penalty here. And, um, yeah, it's really difficult if you can't see the pit entry. And strategy is going to be important once again here today. He's always been important in this race. For Richie Stanaway, he, he works it perfectly at Field of Pilot, today... He's probably got to try and do the same, because passing can be difficult. Yeah, it really can be, and we've got lots of sweeping, lots of long corners here. Um, so we've, we've also got the straights, like you said, for example, down to turn five, one of the classic overtaking spots. But really, you have to be, once again, close enough at turn three to get the run down to uh, turn five. And you said it, it's going to be difficult. And to be close enough at that point, you already have to get the draft on the finish straight. And it's just a couple of factors playing together, really. Once you get uh, the run off the grid, for example, Mogafilo, if he gets a good start here, if he gets the two-second gap here, we've seen that at Motegi, how hard it really is to get this gap back. And as soon as he's two seconds away from the grid, it's uh, basically over till the first pit stops, uh, as we see him on the cameras here, the pole setter for this race from Team Radicals, Mogafilo. And... If he nails the start, really, he's looking towards a good race. Of course, um, these drivers were still not really talking about mistakes here, but it's so easy to make a mistake, especially on a track like Road America with this car. So these drivers not making any mistakes is basically, um, yeah, it's it's just a situation for us which never really occurs. We haven't really seen much driver mistakes here. However, it happened to you really here. You're just going wide a little bit out of the last turn. We've seen it with Spindle happening in the qualifying, and that was just one lap, and we've got 47 of them in the race. 47 laps in this race, indeed. And, of course, some horrible events happening in America yesterday with a number of school children and teachers losing their lives in a school shooting it's not our place to talk about what and what ifs but we're going to step aside for a moment and remember those who lost their lives we'll be right back
and welcome back to Road America. And we've got ourselves 47 laps of racing here today. I always say we race because we have to. And this race is going to be a very difficult race today, Marius. And 47 laps around this racetrack really is going to test these drivers to the absolute limit. It really is 6.5 kilometers long the circuit here at Elkert Lake, Wisconsin, USA. 14 turns. In fact, um, you basically count to 14, but you're going to get a little bit more than that. Uh, having a lot of little kinks, a lot of little bends in the straights, which are, which are of course flat out in the Formula One. We've got two different configurations on this track. We are, however, running the full version, not the bend one. So we're going straight before the kink and not to the chicane version to the left. One of the fastest tracks in the series here, once again. Basically, just um, yeah, breaking points coming from flat out, uh, seventh gear, basically, um, over 300 kilometers an hour, down into first gear, down into second gear. A couple of times is really going to test you on your braking spots. And uh, I can't really say much else than I'm looking forward to this. Indeed, yes. Don't forget, you can keep in contact with us all race long. You can join us on Twitter by using the hashtag IRRoadPro. Alternatively, you can also get in contact with us on GlaciaTV.com or Facebook.com forward slash GlaciaTV. Um, and we're waiting to get live pictures from Road America. This is the sixth round of the IRRoadPro Pro series of road racing. And... When it comes to it, Marius, today is possibly one of the most important races of the season for everything we've all talked about. It really is, and you've seen these standings in the championship, really, how close it is. And if you want to get um, yeah, a little bit of a pre-deciding race here, this would be it. And uh, Richie Stanaway, for example, having good last two races, he might make it three in a row here. Morga Filo definitely got something against that. Filo still being one of the guys looking to get the championship here. And the winner of the first two races, Alexi Osiakula, declaring at the season already that he's not really following so uh, intensively. He's got a bit of an issue with studying, so he has to invest his time a little bit different than that. However, he's still looking to a top five finish. And uh, how do you know? Maybe with a good race um, soon, he's going to get back into that run. Not on the start today, however, Alexi Osiakula. We're going to see him in a couple of races this season. Um, the top five for you once again. Morga Filho on pole position. Richie Stanaway beside him on the grid in the first row. Emil Spindel, Davide Korp completing the second row with the same qualifying time. 1 minute 3 one oh, And Enzo Bonito in fifth position in the third row. Yudan Nerumi in sixth. And, well, I don't really need to say this, but this is once again about the same top six, top seven than we've seen in every race so far. Indeed, yeah, you can really split this field down into about three different segments. You have the top six, seven drivers. We'll put Leskuzi Okoda when he races into that bunch as well. Then you've got yourself that midfield pack, everyone from about P8 down to about P20. And then you have those whose goal is very simple. Get into the top 25 and be a member of the 2013 Aries.com Grand Prix World Championship Series. And let's not forget, that battle's still got to go on as well. Um, um, last time I checked, I believe it was four points separating 25th and 26th position with about six guys currently on the outside looking in. For those guys, a good race today might take the pressure off them going into Watkins Glen in three weeks' time. Yeah, and um, participation count uh, getting a bit lower here. We've had over 30 cars in the first couple of races. We've only got just under 30 cars this time. 26 setting a qualifying time, 27 on the grid. So um, it's your chance to really get the points here. We've still got the same point system, 50 for the winner, 40 for the second one. So um, it's going to be a narrow fight. I'm definitely sure Richie Stanaway has something against Mogafido winning from the grid here. And I just hope the guys take it cleanly into turn one, not risk anything, not risk too much. And um, from then on, I think it's going to be a 47 lap sprint race once again for the lead here, really. Uh, not really much overtaking chances, but you just have to make it work. You have to make it stick and you have to get the run down one of these fast breaking turns to get your overtaking maneuver. And indeed, we'll be bringing you live pictures from Road America in a couple of seconds. In fact, it is now live pictures from Road America. So, <coughs> the field drivers, sorry, lining up on the grid for this race. It is going to be a blistering run on this first lap. Mogar DG Filo, pole position once again. Richie Stanaway, he started this race in second position one week ago. And he took the checkered flag first. So can he do the same? Can Spindel have a better race than his disappointing showing at Phillip Island when he had to start pretty much from the rear of the field? So many stories going into this race. You've got Yudan Arumi with his best qualifying position in ages. 
he will be trying to get himself a nice finish and move himself back up the point standings. We're going to go green in less than 15 seconds time. And it is going to be for 47 laps around this 14 turn, four mile epic of a racetrack. This is Road America. We are green and a good start there. Ricky Stanley, bad start, however. He's passed left, right and centre as they come down to turn number one. Stanley's lost himself three positions already. And he's going to lose a fourth as they come down into turn number one for the first time. Stanley, a bad start by him. Yeah, Rich has completely lost it at the start there. Wheel spin off the line and definitely running a longer first gear here. Stanaway being down into seventh position, now being passed by Udina Rumi. Indeed, yeah, they're two wide racing behind him. We had one driver who was off the track. We'll get ourselves positioned off that in a moment. Team are even and working on Christian Lorente as they come down into turn number five for the first time. It's going to be the last of the late breakers. They've got Paul Ilbeng ahead of him as well by the look of it. And it's a big log jam going into turn number five. And also, I have to say, Stanaway losing another position there to Jesper Pedersen. So a very, very bad start by him. He's kind of under the pressure from Simon Gattel as well. Out front, however, is Modgar DG Filo, who's got Emil Spindel right behind him. Those two have pulled themselves up already a second gap over David Decor. Yeah, and it's going to be incredibly hard for him now to get back at the top here. He's lost six to seven positions here. And with Jesper Pedersen, he's now down into eighth position. So Simon Gattel being right behind him, having a good start as well. But breaking free from the top is Emil Spindel together with Modgar Filo. And they come down into Canada corner for the first time. It is Modgard, E.G. Filo, with about a three tenths of a second gap over Enel Spindel. Those two drivers have really pulled away now. David Corp in third, ends up Benito right behind him in fourth. And Fazio Zeta rounding out more top by Filo into the final corner for the first time. P.J. Sturgeoff having a pass behind him as well. This is on. Jordi Tomano is going to make another position there to get past Brian Terpstra. Terpstra losing two positions there as he wiggled that car through the final corner and he's now trying to work back on Pierre Abruzzo as they come past the start finish line. Action through the field and it's Jaume trying to make it three wide there. Look at that Marcus Gattam and it's going to be two wide, two deep. Jason Lover, is he going to try to go down the middle? He surely will not. But Jason Lover there, he's really fast in the draft and it shows how he can get some good slip training up the hill. Yeah, and guys, take it easy, really. You've got 45 and a half laps to go here, and these guys are going almost three wide at the finish, right? Which really is just as wide as two cars here. So lots of fighting here going on at Road America already. The top two breaking free from the pack, just like we expected. Two seconds to third place. David Corp after um, Richie Stanaway had a bad getaway here from the start. 4.2 seconds down the lead behind Jesper Pedersen for him right now. Top 10 still within 5.3 seconds, and... Uh, Three, four, five, six, all together, just within a couple of hundred. Indeed, yes. And we have to. We'll go back and talk about Stanaway in a moment. Because once again, one of the drivers at the front having a bad start to the race, and this is really going to hurt his charge for the championship. And we're having a look at Yudo and Rumi on your screens. He's in the sixth position. He is about four tenths of a second behind Vasily Zetov as they're working away down into Canada Corner on lap number two. The Rumi is having himself one of his better starts to the race. He's currently sat in that sixth position. He lost out of position at the start of the race but of course with Stanaway falling backwards he's still sat in at that sixth position so working away into turn number 13. Cars getting a little bit aero tight to come up that um, crest because of the fact that you've just got to take up so much speed as they come up the hill. The Rumi say still sat in that sixth position ahead of them we have to say that Velo is starting to turn a wick up a little bit now. Yeah and meanwhile Richie Stanaway is again past just for Pedersen here. Pedersen with half spinning the car here in the last sector. Richie Stanaway goes past him on the main straight getting back into seventh position now he's got a bit of breathing space ahead 1.4 seconds to Yudai Narumi and we'll just keep an eye on his lap times to maybe see what strategy he's on but he's definitely looking to gain some time he's lost on the start indeed yes and your top 10 is Modgar DG Filo from Emil Spindel from Enzo Benito from David Corp from Vesely Zetov they your top 5 then Narumi Stanaway Pedersen Gattel Lorente running out your top 10 Spindel getting a much better start there of the third lap of this race he's closed that gap ahead of him. Now he's a really good slipstream advantage if he can get a good run for the carousel and the second part of this lap. Meanwhile, the Rumi is past, um, but um, he's got past um, Leslie Zatoff there. He's up now into the fifth position. Yeah, and from 1.4 seconds at the start finish line, um, we've lost about seven tenths of a second here between Zaitchev and Stanaway. So you see how quickly it goes. Narumi going past Zaitchev and Zaitchev losing almost a second there to the rear. And Stanaway being right in a slipstream distance already. 
Yeah, and Nurumi, a good start to his race, and I have to say, Stanaway is looking as though he's trying to close that gap down too. Um, Zaytef in that 75 car as they're working their way down into turn number 13. Once again, we're on board Richard Stanaway as he comes down into turn 14. This is a place where Spindel lost it in qualifying on his third and final lap. As they come up the hill, you just see how we'll start to close a little bit on Yudana Marumi as he gets that zip string. We'll see just how much top speed these cars have. Stanaway, 190 miles an hour just um, ahead of him. Zaytef actually, a full two miles an hour faster as he came down to turn number one. Things not looking good here for Stanaway because looking as though he's running that car a lot more downforce, thinking perhaps he could have got a jump at the start of this race. Yeah, and maybe he's even on another strategy. We're not really sure about that yet. We'll definitely be following that. However, at the top of the grid, two seconds splitting place one Mogafilo or two third place Enzo Bonito here. And uh, Bonito slowly catching up to these guys as Davide Corp is slower and slower. And uh, Bonito currently the fastest guy here in the field, setting the fastest lap of the session with a 1 minute 36.574. The top two setting 0.8 and point, uh, point 0.7 while in the mid pack, Yoni Termala has passed him. Indeed, yes, yeah, so he's moved himself now up into the 13th position. To talk about the drivers involved in early on in this race, Tiago Alfaro went off track in turn number one. A single car incident all by himself. Andrea Boldy also classified as out of the race. Trying to figure out what happened to Boldy, but was, sorry, on lap number one, down into turn number nine. Checking in on the battle, meanwhile, for the battle for P10 on the racetrack. This is really hotting up with Paul Lillbrand looking down to the inside as they come into Canada corner. Will it be expected to pass the back? No! Lorente there tried to do it. It's smooth. I cannot believe what he tried doing there on Simon Cattell. Cattell managed to stay ahead, but Lorente, what the hell was that? Yeah, and I wonder if he really tried to do that now, but I think it's just been a driving mistake as the only terminal had too wide now on the, fin uh, on the final straight. Paul Ulbrink with a mistake out of the final turn. Now you see these guys doing a too wide action down the first turn and Termler not having the slipstream from Max Del Orco, but he still has a good straight line speed, so down into turn one. Will Termler try to make the pass here? Still too wide into turn one. It'll be trying to hold the outside, almost contact there, and even it also goes past there. So, little mistake from Paul Ilbring trying to hold the outside line, loses in two positions. And it shows just how slippery the outside line of turn one is. Paul Ilbring there. Once you get out there, there is just absolutely no grip. Him. He had to really slow that car down, losing himself two positions there in the space of one corner. But action all the way through the mid part of this field. Yoni Tamara actually getting a little bit of a wiggle as he came out of turn number five. Now heading underneath the Corvette Ridge into turn number six. Um, checking on this battle for the race lead, however, and you've got yourself Modgar DG Filo as things are happening so further back with um, Fabio De Carmo trying to make a pass on um, Tiago Alfaro. Um, things really happening out front, even down the field as well. And Fabio De Carmo there looking and getting passed by Tiago Alfaro as he's trying to make his way back to the field. Yeah, currently, Timo Ivan and and a little incident there, not crashing into the wall, but the 14th position finish driver here had a little incident going uphill left out of the hairpin, and he's the car into the grass, almost spun there, and that puts him down into 19th position. Yeah, so Timo Evening, things not going his way today in that 59 car. He's got a lot of work to do, but we have seen, Marius, that passing not only is possible, but if you manage to time your passes correctly, turn number one is actually a really good place to pass here today. The same with turn five, the same with right down into Canada Corner. We've got ourselves a good set of battles that's going on in the racetrack. As, um, you can just see that Timo even are really falling down the standings now. And we're showing a replay on your screen of that momentarily. Yeah, we need to see how Timo even lost the car then. Uh, yeah, it's one of the prime examples really to see how easy it is. You see, he's just put the car on the grass there. He's going a little bit sideways and he's almost got it into the wall. He saved it from that, however. The race is still long, so from his current 18th position, he's still meant to gain some positions there, I guess. But uh, currently at the top of the grid, Moga Afilo breaking free a little bit, at least, from Eamon Spindler. Spindler allowing him a bit of a space to breathe. 1.1 seconds separating the first and second drivers of the race so far. Um, following the spectator chant here, a couple of drivers from the DWC season here, for example, Jake Sturgis and Daniel Lopez currently discussing if it is worth going for the one-stop here. So they are expecting both Davide Corp and Richie Stanaway to be on a one-stop strategy. And also Petri Kotovara says, Davi versus Richie for the win. 
So I'm really suspecting if these guys are really sure about that because currently I don't think you can really say uh, who's on Whitney, but we're expecting the two-stop strategy to come into the pits around lap 15 to 18. Obviously the one-stop strategy making it longer to come around lap um, 24, 25 here. So with the current pace of Davide Korb only being about half a second slower per lap, this could really make it work and also Richie Stanaway has got the same pace. Indeed, yes, as we're having a look on board of Max Delorco as he comes up the hill. He's closing that gap down to Christian Lorante in 10th in this battle, which has also got Simon Cattell just involved in it as well, sat in the ninth position, just about eight times to a second ahead of Christian Lorente. And this is going to make things even more interesting, because if you have drives on the one-stop strategy, yes, they can take their car as long as the race. Yes, it's going to be a little bit slower earlier on, but the way this track works, it is so long. Traffic is going to be as big an issue as, say, Philip Island last week or Silverstone. And it's an option. And also the fact that you've not got as many sweeping corners. There's a lot more stop start on these previous couple of weeks. Really gives drivers the opportunity to think of alternative strategies. But we all, all, we've seen so far in this series, Marius, when someone goes into a different strategy, normally it goes the wrong way for them. Yeah, and um, swimming uh, yeah, in the stream basically has always proved to be a good way here of uh, making a count. However, for example, for Stanaway, he's still in seventh position. He started from pole position, uh, sorry, from second position, of course. Um, not going to be too satisfied here dropping down the grid so far. Still, he is in seventh position. He's just swimming with the fishes here. It's really just behind Vesely Tychev. He's in the slipstream. He's not really doing anything crazy. He's just following. And if he's really on a one-stop uh, one strategy, being 7.7 .7 seconds down, not really that much slower than the uh, top of the field here, I don't think it's too bad of a decision. Still, we've only got uh, seven laps in the books here, um, 40 to go. I can't really think um, yeah, if, if it's meant to be like that yet. But um, yeah, if he keeps up this pace, keeps up following, as soon as the guys go into the pits, of course his tires will be a little bit warm. He's still going to be on the little fuel load of his stint, and uh, well, then he's basically just driving free. The only thing a guy like Stanaway has to look out for is that Filho, Spindler and Bonito at the top of the pack don't run away so much that they're still going to be in front of him after the pit stop. That would be destroying Richie Stanaway's strategy if he's able to break free at the first pit stop and just get a few clean laps in. This could really make the strategy work. Indeed, yeah, and I think with the issue of the one-stop strategy as well is that you've got to manage your own race. You can't go trying to chase lap times that you know you can't do because you've got a heavier fuel load and it's always that issue with the two stop guys, you know they're faster, you know that your pit crew is telling you that they're closing down on you, but you have to just hit your own delta times, the ones that you've practiced lap after lap after lap in practice sessions to try and get the job done. Otherwise, you push that car too hard, it's all going to go backwards on you and we are perhaps having a very interesting strategy race here today at Road America. Taking on that battle with Vasily Zaytov and Yudai Narumi, it looks as though um, Zaytov can close a lot on the straightaways, but is struggling in dirty air at the moment. And you saw them in the middle section of the racetrack, Yudai Narumi actually able to pull out to over a second. So they come into the start finish line, and Zaytov can close out all the way back down to about seven tenths of a second on the racetrack. Yeah, and it's basically the same situation with the leaders of this race so far. Uh, Davide Korb in fourth position being the only one not going the same lap times as Mogafilo sets another fastest lap of the race here. And the second one below the 1 minute 36 mark, 1 minute 35.900 for the Brazilian here. Emil Spindel, the Swede, 1 minute 35.9 and Enzo Bonito, the Italian, 1 minute 36.1. So pretty much similar lap times for all of them. Davide Korb, however, and I think we could go um, a, li uh, a little bit more certain here about the strategies. Either he's incredibly slow, which I can't think of, or he's really on a different strategy. He's about 7 to 9 tenths slower per lap, so his last lap has been just inside the 1 minute 36 mark, uh, 0.977 in fact. And behind him, Yudai Narumi is still doing 0.5, so um, you could suspect that Narumi is still on a two-stop. Um, not really sure about the side shift because he's also done a 0.5, but Stanaway is also stuck within the high 36s. Paul Ilbrink there trying to make a big pass over Yoni Tomales came down to turn number five. A huge wiggle from that Radicals driver working on the Maifrey head driver of Yoni Tomales as they're working their way down to turn number seven. That has lost Ilbrink all forms of momentum. But Ilbrink, once again, very good in a straight line as these Radical cars normally are. And looking as though he is really trying to get himself up a couple of positions. Ilbrink started this race in a 74 car. Uh, in the 12th position, he's lost himself one position, trying to get himself back up to where he started in this race. But when we talk about Paul Ilbrink, my mind has to go back to two weeks ago 
at Silverton, that blistering overtake on the outside. And if there's any driver who's going to make a big pass in turn five, it probably is going to be Paul Hilbert here today. Yeah, and Paul also showing a good pace and a good show in the Proto Ice here, especially at the last race in Road Atlanta. So we're going to have the Proto Ice coming up tonight as well from the Australian track of Phillip Island. We've seen these guys um, with the Formula One car, so um, now with the prototype cars, it's going to be a similar race. But um, yeah, we don't really need to say much about action in these races. Indeed, yeah, and you see there, down the front straightaway, Ilbrink, 193 miles an hour coming down into turn number one. You compare that to the speed that Yoni Tamale was doing, struggling to hit 190 miles an hour there. And that means that in a straight line, Ilbrink really is faster. He's a lot further back this time, so he won't be able to make a pass. But Tamale is, um, by the looks of it, losing ground now to um, Max Delorca, Christian Lorente and Simon Cattell ahead of him. And it's looking as though we're getting ourselves these little packs of cars. You've got that free car pack with Simon Cattell, Christian Lorente and Max Delorco. They are battling for ninth position on the racetrack. You've got yourself the Yudo Narumi and Francis Zeta battle, which Richard Sanaway is trying like nothing to hold on to. In fact, they're catching David the Corpse as well. So we're back into that phase now, Marius, with about four or five cars running very similar times on the racetrack and into that dirty air effect a little bit. Yeah, the guys are basically in the race trim already and it just shows that um, it could be a little bit difficult to make this stick for the entire race. Um, both Richie Stanaway and Davide Corp are struggling a little bit. Stanaway has been putting pressure on Vizzini Saichev in the first couple of laps, but as soon as Saichev got into his rhythm, he's trying to follow Yudai Narumi and Yudai Narumi is following Davide Corp. And um, yeah, both Davide Corp and Richie Stanaway, of course, being on the one-stop strategy, supposedly, and Yudai Narumi and Zaitchev being on the two-stop strategy. So they want to go past. They are being held up by the one-stoppers here. And, um, well, that's exactly the thing you don't want on a two-stop strategy, to be stuck in traffic. Checking in on the retirement from this race. We've just had the one retirement so far. That was Andrew Boldy in the 22 car. We talked briefly about what happened to that 22 car. It was on lap number one, coming down into turn number seven. And had a number of other drivers as well there. And we get word that it was actually a suspension failure um, from Boldy's car. Something slapped on him, his wheel wasn't working, and he collected a Miguel Martin in that incident as well. Just one other car involved. Miguel Martin is still circulating on the racetrack, so somehow managing to get away without any damage. But Martin is down in the 21st position at the moment, just one place higher then he started. So just a one retirement and once again, a very clean start to this race, Marius. Yeah, and meanwhile, Paul Ubing finally got past Yoni Terminal and just trying to rewind here and see where that exactly happened. And it must have been about um, the last sector of the last lap as Terminal was almost at the back of the guys of Max Del Orco, the pack around um, position 9 here, as um, he spun it coming down into the second last turn with a very lucky recovery to the track, in fact. He, so he's completely spun it across the track onto the straight. Luckily, he had no one coming, but he's, of course, now two and a half seconds down to Paul Ubring. But that has been some lucky recovery for Yoni Tamala. And we're getting word as well that Ryan Terpstra had an incident as well. He's on that car and he had an issue on the racetrack, but uh, out front, it is still Monica DT Filo leading the way. Emma Spindel in second, Enzo Benito in third, David Corpse in fourth, Yudan Rumi rounding out your top five. You know, about five laps away from this first round of pit stops. Um, I have to say that Spindel has really been, once again, in that 1.2, 1.5 second window. And uh, having a look at the top of Spindel is not as fast as Monica DT Filo's, but perhaps Spindel just saving his tyres to try and do a couple of blistering laps in between his stop and a modified DG Pilos, he, we've seen how if you can go a couple of laps longer, you know, that could be the difference maker and that's how Pilo lost out one week ago at Phillip Island. Yeah, and meanwhile on the screen you've seen what happened to the 3AD driver Yoni Termola in the number 77 car. So a brilliant recovery, a bit of Gymkhana action there and defending the position of course against Joao Cardoso who is currently right behind him once again. Three seconds down to, uh, to 12th position, Paul Ilbrink. So, um, yeah, yeah, instead of defending against Ilbrink, he's now in the chase position here. Still a great for uh, Yoni Termola so far. He came from place 18, made a great start, a great first couple of laps, and now is in 13th position. Yep, and in the 13th position, and running well for the time being is Yoni Termola, despite that incident, um, right in that mid-pack. And for some of these drivers, of course, we need to forget that they're running for the championship. They are running for the top 25 in points. That is what they need to do to get themselves into the 2013 iRacing.com Grand Prix World Championship Series. 
12 laps in the books now here at Road America. It is still Fulo leading the way. We're going to get ourselves a replay of the start in a couple of moments' time. And one thing that we need to have a look at as it's going to come up on our screen is Richie Stanaway. What a very slow start. Will's been on that 72 car and it just didn't happen for him at the start of this race. Yeah, and I wonder if you can exactly blame it on the strategy, as David Corp has also got, um, yeah, supposedly a one-stop strategy here. He's been in fourth position, and he held the fourth position, of course, benefiting from uh, the second position, Richie Stanaway, to drop back, as currently we are following Yudai Narumi trying to make the move on David Corp, and he does it. The two-stop car of Yudai Narumi being fast enough with him at the wheel here to make the pass to David Corp. And we're going to check out the replay of that. And uh, I wonder how long it's going to take for Zilli Sidechef to get the pass right now. But first, we're going to take a look at the start. Indeed, yeah, having a look at the start. And it was just slow for Stanway. And the cars were just having to spit to dark around them. We talked about how this is a very narrow racetrack. And you have to really try to get things done. And you see there that as soon as it's um, blue side to blue, and David Cox having to move to the right-hand side of the racetrack. Luckily, there's no one to his right as well, but there's going to be free wide immediately. But well, everyone being able to get through the first couple of corners, okay, Zaytev there, making that move down to turn one. And Stanaway, he was on that outside line coming into turn one. He could have actually flicked back in and stayed ahead of um, Yudai Narumi, but he was on that outside line, and then that really is what cost him. There's just so little grip on that outside line there. Um, but for the rest of those drivers, a very good start. DG Peter able to get out in front, spin down, a nice start for him as well. And, you know, apart from Stanaway, a very clean start to this race. Um, but as far as David the Corpse goes, he's on that one-stop strategy, we think. And for him right now, he just needs to get back into his own. He doesn't need to chase down Yudai Narumi that much. It's just the case of carrying on what he's doing and hoping that it all comes together for him. It marries. As soon as he starts pushing that car too hard, he's throwing his one-stop strategy out the window. Yeah, and he really just needs to make this work, as currently we had a spin from Max Del Orco, I think. Yes, it is Max Del Orco putting the car sideways onto the grass and spinning it in the last turn, trying to get you a replay then. Very, very dangerous recovery on the track there. Del Orco just cutting across Jao Cardoso there, almost risking an incident. And at the moment, Cardoso also being passed by Pierre Obitsu. So I wonder if that really put some damage onto Cardoso's car. Coming down the hairpin, um, he's trying to fight back. And yes, he does it. Pierre Obitsu dropping back him again as um, Del Orco is... Sorry, there's an incident between Yoni Termala and Paul Ilbrink. Oh, no. And these two drivers, and they're spinning on the grass. Ilbrink trying to get himself back onto the racetrack. However, he is having to let all of these cars go past him. And this is going to be heartbreaking for Paul Ilbrink, who had such a good race um, going until that point. We'll get ourselves a replay of that on your screens momentarily. But this was down into turn at number seven. There were two wide coming into the corner. How many look at it? It looks as though Tomato was just made a big move down on the inside, trying to get the right hammer to see this easily from. But it was down to say into turn at number seven. And as far as Tomato went, it just looked as though he went down the inside. Ilbrink didn't realize he was coming. Two cars into one doesn't really work there, and it just looked as it all started with Ilbrink having to be better and going wide, sorry, into turn number six. So he was slow coming to turn seven, and the first place comes back onto the racetrack there, doesn't realize that Tomano's going to come down his inside, and the two just touch. Yeah. <laughs> There's Marius. Yep, that's what happened. Yeah, I, I can agree. only agree with you. That's been a basic, um, yeah, recollation of the things really happening here as the uh, Terminal doesn't have to seem to collect much damage as he's right back on the tail of Obitsu and Cardoso and he's joined the battle between them and uh, PJ Sturgis who's breaking away a little bit so he's not really lost much ground. Um, Sturgis being 11th leading this pack right now, Terminal being down in 14th but I think for Paul Ulbrink, um, yeah it's an early pit stop here, his car being severely damaged and that is going to be the pit crew most likely saying race over for you, we can't fix the damage and that's it for today. Yeah, indeed, full of break, 45 miles an hour for this pit road. Well, in fact, we'll come back to pit road speed in a minute. Um, but um, Ilbrink, he is going to come down into his pit box. We'll see whether his pit crew can do any repairs for him at all. We'll get a confirmation of that actually very early on. He's actually taking tyres. So if he is taking tyres, there is a chance he can get that car back onto the racetrack. Remember, there's only been one retiree in this race so far, about two retirees, because um, Hal Pino is out of this race. Max Delorco is also one lap down and is out by our um, screens. 
Um, <laughs> so, at the very best, at the moment, he's only looking to get into himself into 25th position. But, um, you know, he'll try and get those repairs and try and get himself back onto the racetrack. That incident, however, it, it did just look like two cars didn't go into one. I, I'm not sure that Ilbring thought that Tormano was going to come down that quickly. But, of course, you go off the track at a place like Turn 6, which is a slow corner into a place where you need good momentum into Turn 7. You've always got to expect someone to try and make a move on you, surely. Yeah, it's uh, something you can't really do, but yeah, it can happen. And uh, we've still got lots of battles going on here on the track. We've still got David the Corp versus Vasily Tytrap. It's been quite quickly that um, Narumi's got passed, and he's also got two and a half seconds of a gap right away. So Narumi can really show how much faster his car is as your only travel is on your screen, trying to make the pass down into the hairpin against Joao Cardoso here. 13th position, and he's um, yeah, looking it through, basically. Um, didn't really listen to what Cardoso said on the spec chat there, but um, there's been a little issue there, and uh, Cardoso's letting pass. Indeed, yes. So Cardoso moves down a position into the 13th spot. Keeping an eye on Modgar DT Feeder because he is probably going to make his pit stop in the next couple of laps time. The pit window is now definitely open. All these drivers making a two-stop strategy. Filo stays out this time, by keep an eye to see where the spin down makes that journey onto pit road, or indeed anyone else does. But we are very close to our first line of pit stops here. I'm going to take you back to that pit road speed because we've had some very, very slow pit road speeds recently, but 45 miles an hour, that does actually make it a little bit easier on the guys doing the two-stop strategies because... It's one of the fastest pit road speeds that we have all season. Yeah, however, the pit road is quite long, and Vasily Taitev being the first one to pit in here, that could be a good decision for the um, for the Russian here, as, um, yeah, basically, he's coming down pit road. He's been fighting against the guys amongst Richie Stanaway, David Corp, Jesper Peterson. He's been just stuck behind David Corp, really, for a couple of laps, and he's doing just the optimum at the moment, going into the pits, trying to get some clean air, trying to get an early pit stop, making it a longer middle stint, and trying to capitalize on the errors David Corp might do right now, as, of course, we're trying to, um, yeah, get a little bit more confirmation on that, but we think that David Corp is on a one-stop strategy. So this is really the smartest thing one can do in this situation. He's going into the pit, um, refueling the car early and just trying to get some clean air here as he comes out of the pit right ahead, or no, sorry, right behind Ryan Terpster in 23rd. And that's the worst thing that you want to have happen. Come out of pit road with a slower car ahead of you. Ryan Terpster currently sat down in at the 22nd position. Vasily Zaytov just a second behind him and he's also actually got Fabian yeah. Karma. It's um, about five attempts ahead of Terpster as well. And this is what we saw at Philip Island. If you get stuck behind slower cars, really, your race, your entire strategy could be thrown out the window as Modgar DG Filo from the race lead comes down onto pit road. Emil Spindel comes in right behind him as well. It's going to be a race on pit road once again. And both of those drivers very quick and towards pit road. Going to have a look to see actually whether any of them did speed because, yeah, and Enzo Benito coming onto pit road as well to make it three cars on pit road. And both of those drivers were perfectly okay on their way into pit road. Fido actually a little bit slower on that right in. Findel is in. How Pino's made his pit stop. Benito's in. Yulan and Rumi onto pit road. Jesper Pettis onto pit road. Um, Simon Cattell stays out. But Modgar DG Fido into the last pit stop. He's going to have himself a very nice run. He's getting himself four fresh tyres. He's going to get himself topped up with race gas as well. Findel behind him. Is he going to get out of his box first? No, he's not. And Modgar DG Fido is going to keep the lead there for Al Findel. They come out as they come in. And I have to say, even though Spindel was a lot better coming onto pit road, Modgar DG Filo was looking as though he had himself a slightly better pit stop. Yeah, and especially Enzo Bonito being the loser at the first pit stop here. He's uh, splitted from the top two, in fact. He's splitted by three cars. Joao Cardoso, Jay Slavitt and Dave Geeling between them. And we get confirmation from Yoni Backman here um, that the pit stop from Modgar Filo has been actually one, uh, sorry, 0.8 seconds quicker than the one from Spindle. So good stop from Filo here. Uh, could maybe suspect that he's on a shorter middle stint, but we've completely blinked that out. David de Corps and Richie Stanway are still out on track, and um, yeah, it takes about two, three more laps to say if this is really it, but we're expecting them to pit around lap 24 here, but we're not exactly sure if it's a two stop yet. Checking in, let's battle with Brian Turtrip, Javier and Carmo. That is a turn at number six, and that is not a place where you want to try and make a pass. Ryan Turpster trying to go the long way around into turn number six there. Both those drivers somehow managed to keep together on the racetrack. Turpster is behind Tabitha Karma. This is about for 20th and 21st positions on the racetrack. And don't forget, you've got Vasily Zeta, who's been stuck behind these cars as well, who is going to have to try and find a way past. But 
these two battling on the racetrack is going to make it very difficult for the Russian in that 75 car to do anything about his strategy, and he's going to lose himself all forms of time if things do not go his way. David Fox is now your race leader, Richard Stanaway is in second position. Simon Cattell, he is currently sat in the third position, PJ Sturgill's in fourth. Low drivers haven't pitted, Chris Lorente is on to pit Rome. Mudguard DG Filo moving himself then up into the fifth position as Lorente and also Yoni Tamada pitting on the racetrack. So, it's looking as though that the whole one-stop, two-stop strategy thing, this is going to come to fruition. And we'll, we'll get confirmation in a couple of more laps time, which you keep on saying, Marius. But, anyway, this is going to be an interesting battle. Yeah, as both Jesper Peterson and uh, Vasily Taichev are past Fabio the Carmo out of the last turn. He's lost two positions by that. And, um, yeah, Taichev still being stuck behind Terps. The Terps are not really thinking about pitting yet. But we may not forget that the gap between Zaitchev and Peterson has actually been less than before. So um, even by pitting earlier and being stuck in the traffic, Zaitchev has done the right thing here and um, just trying to get some time done here. And um, the guys who've been around him, Davide de Korp and Richard Stanaway, of course, trying to make uh, their strategy work now as both of them are on their fastest laps right now. Stanaway last lap point three, and uh, before that a point oh nine nine his PB and Davide Korp setting his PB in the last lap point one one. Seven. So both are on a good run here as Simon Cattell might even be on a one-stop strategy as well. The Brit is running right at the tail of them uh, time-wise, basically 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4 for him in the last couple of laps. And also Joao Pinho seems to be, no sorry, he's been in the pits, but PJ Sturgis also not been in the pits as we're about to start the 20th lap here. And he's been followed by the um, race leaders from a few laps ago. And it's still Joao Cardoso, Jason Lovett, Dave Feeling splitting them and Enzo Bonito. And this battle between Abu Corps and Richard Stanaway, this is going to make things really interesting in the race because right now, Morgan DG Filo, ML Spindel, they're going to have to really charge on this second set, um, second set of tyres. And when I go back to Filo, I think immediately back to one week ago where Filo lost the race because of taking perhaps a little bit too much fuel in pit road on that first pit stop. So he's learned from his mistake last week. That's what kept him ahead of ML Spindel, because I said Spindel actually a lot faster coming onto pit road himself. However, losing out in the big picture of things and Spindel and um, Filo really have to push that car now for these next 10-15 laps to try and keep that gap to an absolute minimum between David Corpse and Richard Stanaway who as you say they're on lighter fuel right now to this start of the race they are going to be the drivers setting the fastest laps of the race if they manage to keep their tyres in optimal temperature they wear their tyres up too much and they're going to be stopped so it's David Corps from Richard Tannery from Simon Cattell, PJ Sturgis in fourth. The first of the drivers who have pitted, Mogla DG Filo in the 62 car, sat in the fifth position. Emma Spindel currently sat in sixth. Hal Kodasu seventh. Jason Lover eighth. Dave Geelink in ninth. Enzo Benito rounding out your top ten. I have to say, Benito suffered with that pit stop, and I have to say the same for Vasily Zeta. He suffered with his pit stop as well. Yeah, we have to mention, I haven't really mentioned that yet, but the drivers uh, separating Enzo Bonito and Emil Spindel here, Joao Cardoso, Jay Slavitt and Dave Geeling, currently 7th to 9th, they are also on a one-stop strategy. They haven't been in the pits yet, and that's going to be hurting Enzo Bonito more and more. He's been the only one not following the two uh, cars who pitted ahead of him. Filho and Spindel now running free, and he's the only one not running free, really. So um, a couple of laps time until Filho reaches PG Sturgis. And Sturgis also not been in the pits yet, but this time he's lost about three seconds to the guys ahead just by being stuck in traffic. And, um, yeah, I'm, I really wonder if the one-stop, however, is the right strategy, as when David de Corps and Richie Stanaway pit, they are going to be right in the traffic of the ones who haven't pitted and will only pit in about five to six laps time. So in these five laps, you have to get lucky. You don't, you, you can't really afford to be in traffic. So if these laps go wrong, um, you're in a lot of trouble. And also, um, Milo Sprindel actually two times a lap faster than the race leaders at present. You have, yes, that's cool, but you've had those tyres now on your car for 21 laps. And it really does create a fascinating picture. And for the Corpus and Stanaway, they just got to set their fastest laps possible to try and get ahead of that traffic and then hope something happens on those second hit stops. But for Stanaway, after that first bad stop, I think that some of these drivers had it in their mind coming into this race. And where strategy goes, this has been the most fascinating battle we've had all season long. And I have to say, both Stanaway and the Corpus are currently looking as though they're going to be solid for a top five finish if 
they can get their strategies to work to them, and they've got to make sure they don't mess up on pit road as well. Um, working lap number 22 at the moment, it is David Corps, his last lap time, a 1 minute 36.233. Mogga DG Filo, just one tenth of a second slower that um, past lap. Fastest guy on the racetrack at the moment is Richie Stanaway in that 72 car as working at Enzo Benito. He's trying to go two wide into turn one. He will complete the pass there on Dave Geeling. And Geeling, look as though he's going to try and do the cut under down into number two. Will Geeling try and make the pass back? No, he doesn't. Enzo Benito finally getting around there. The 41 car of Dave Geeling moving him back up into the ninth position. He's still got Jason Lover and Hal Cordasso ahead of him on the racetrack. And he is only about a second and a half between those two drivers who are working way down into turn number five. Um, and Marius, it, it gets really difficult here because you don't know necessarily who's on a one-stop strategy, who's on a two-stop strategy. And if you're a two-stop guy and you're thinking, oh, that guy is on the same strategy as me, and he's not, he's stuck. Yeah, you really are. And um, taking a look at Enzo Bonito here, he's lost about five seconds. And he's been one second um, behind Emil Spindle before the pit stop. So, uh, in addition, about four seconds lost just by being stuck in traffic here. And Bonito, Bonito, of course, trying his best to get past these guys, as Dave Gilling wasn't really um, a barrier for him there. But you have to get, you have to get close enough, really. But no one ahead is going to slow down for you. So if you're not close enough, you're not going to make the pass. If you are, however, um, the guys are all knowing that, um, yeah, being on a different strategy is, um, of course, to, um, requiring different racing tactics. As Dave Gilling has shown, he's not tried to re-overtake Enzo Bonito, as that is just going to cost both of them more time than they would eventually gain. So Enzo Bonito now trying to make the second pass here as he's going to get the run to Jason Lovett into the first turn as we're on board with him. And we You'll just see, done. yeah, Jason Lovett lifts here. He's slowing down a tiny bit to just let him pass. And that is a very smart move by Lovett. He's just letting him pass on the straight. He's not risking any maneuver into the turn. He's not risking a crash. He's not risking to lose more time. And yeah, if it's a high amount, he's lost about two tenths with that. And he's still gained on Dave Keeling. Indeed, yeah, and the way it works is, you know, as soon as you start driving defensively, you, you're losing time all over the place. You have to take different apexes into the corners. You, you're trying to force that guy behind you into making a mistake. And by doing that, he can stay behind Benito. He can get himself the speed, the extra speed of Benito for the moment. Of course, he's um, trying to charge his way through the field. And I have to say that that battle that's going to happen shortly between Enzo Benito and Hal Cordasso, that'll be for the seventh position on the racetrack. That'll be so interesting to see what Enzo Benito's lap is as he comes past the line once again. Last time, by it was a 1 minute 36.4. Compare that to a 1 minute 36.8 for Hal Cordasso. And we expect that the one stoppers are going to come onto pit road next lap. They stay out this time by David Corpse in the 58 car, which is down away in the 72. They are still your top two drivers. Time to tell is sat in the third position, PJ Sturgios in the fourth spot. These drivers have not made a pit stop yet here today. And I have to say, for people like Simon Cattell and PJ Sturgios, this could work in their favour because the midfield battle is so tight that they can actually leapfrog some of the two-stop guys who've been stuck down behind some of the one-stop guys a little bit further down the field. Yeah, and to really summarise this, it is Davide Korb versus Richie Stanaway as um, we've got a car in the pits and that is Joao Cardoso and he's been one of the guys on a one-stop strategy so um, yeah he's just proving that um, around lap 23, 24 we've got the first cars in the pits is also Thiago Afau and Miguel Martin pit and they've also been on a one-stop strategy so supposedly David Corp and Richie Stanaway will pit in we'll keep an eye on that of course on the pit entry but to come back to that it is going to be David Corp versus Richie Stanaway and those two versus Moga Fino versus Emil Spindle. So we've got these two-on-two -two battles, really, between the guys on a one-stop and the guys on a two-stop. We've got Spindle and Filo basically breaking free from Enzo Bonito. They are the ones, the fastest on the track currently with a two-stop strategy, 21 and 23 seconds behind the leaders. And Davide Korb and Richie Stanley, who, who will fall back right into traffic after their pit stop. They're going to have a longer pit stop. They are still leading, but it could be this time by they're going to pit. And then it's going to be a thing if they are going no. to last. Yes, yes they are oh, both right. in the pits. And now it's the question, is it really the strategy which will work? If you're stuck with 10 laps in the traffic now, you've got the heavier car, you've got the better tyres, of course, but you have to wait about five, six, seven laps until the guys on the two-stop will pit, and this is going to be ruining a race. So if this is the case, it is going to be Philo or Spindle who will take this race victory home. It's not that far yet. 
so far they still got to nail this pit stop and um, it's still a matter of um, Richie Stanaway maybe going to um, yeah, fuel a couple of litres less. He's not really got much breathing space there, but a good pit stop could gain Stanaway this one position against David Corp and uh, then it's out into traffic and it could be around... Um, yeah, in fact, all these uh, one-stoppers come in right now, so it could actually play out that they are all out, and yes, David the Cop stays in front. They've been a close maneuver. He's almost going through Richie Stanaway there. Yudai Narumi, the only one with the second, um, yeah, with the two-stop strategy in front of them, but he's going to run free. Uh, Stanaway and the Cop might get a pretty free track. Indeed, yeah, and I have to say, Richie Stanaway, it was so close there between those two. Stanaway, I think, trying to do as much as he could. He actually did gain quite a lot on that previous couple of laps. I was wondering whether David the Cops actually trying to save just a tiny bit of fuel to get down to the end of that lap, because that previous lap, I have to say that David the Cops was losing a ton of time to Richie Stanaway. Those two are currently separated by about seven tenths of a second on the racetrack, but to try and figure out where they feed into things, they behind Yudai Narumi in the ninth position. David Corpse is about two and a half seconds back from the 76 car there, the um, yeah, Nexus Esports car of Yudai Narumi. He's working his way through the carousel. After that, they actually haven't got much traffic at all until they get down to Simon Cattell. And Simon Cattell is like Marcus Caton even. Marcus Caton is coming down into the Canada corner now, and you see David Corpse is a good. 10 seconds behind that, so actually it's not worked out too badly at all for these two. However, Rick Sanaway, most importantly, wasn't able to get out ahead of David Corpse, and that could be the battle we're looking for for the race lead later on in this race. Yudan Rumi's actually had a big wiggle there as they came out of the final corner. And Marcus Caton is the last of the drivers to come onto pit road, so that's going to make things even easier for those two drivers, David Corps and Richie Stanaway. Um, Yudan Rumi is now up into fourth, and it is Modgar DG Filo with a 1.4 second cap over ML Spindel, Enzo Benita in third, a further four seconds back. Yudan Rumi in the fourth position, then David Corps is in 20 seconds behind Modgar DG Filo, and we think it's about 22, 23 seconds you need to make a pit stop. It's really at the moment close. Yeah, it is. And now it's the time for Filo and Spindle to put the hammer down to get the fastest lap times off the stint. They are currently in the 26th of 47 laps, so we're not expecting them to pit for another 8 to 10 laps, really. And these are the laps, if you're gaining about 3, 4 tenths a lap, you're going to make about 4 to 5 seconds, and that is exactly what you need. Um, if you're going to pit and to stay in front, as Stanaway and um, the Corp are not running into much more traffic, United Rumi two seconds ahead of them, Zaitchev behind them. Zaitchev might even try to overtake them, as he's also on a two-stop strategy. But on their own, they might run about similar times. They are a little bit slower, but not that much slower. And yeah, it's just going to be a really interesting battle to see, really. And none of them can afford any mistakes. And um, yeah, to round this up, Enzo Bonito being 5.8 seconds behind. Oof, uh, half the race only being over, but it's going to be a hard job for the Italian to get back at the lead after being stuck after his first pit stop. So uh, Bonito currently 7.2 seconds. If he, he's even had a mistake on his last lap there. Um, yeah, well, I think you could say it's currently Philo Spindle versus Stanaway and the Corps. And right now, the Corps and Stanaway still have to do what they did. They right now working to a lap or two. They cannot push those tyres too hard. And I have to say, the Corpse, I was a little bit worried, actually, that his tyres were starting to fall off the cliff a little bit. But this is a fascinating battle. Modgar DG Filo, he's always been in the bride, never, um, the bridesmaid, never the bride. He has really had to work that car. And what's been down is in his second position after a horrible race one week ago at Phillip Island, trying to get back into this championship picture. But Zazali Zaitov there trying to look down to the inside of Richard Stanaway as they come down into turn number five. Zaitov's going to complete the pass. This is really now going to make things difficult for Richard Stanaway. He's got the hope that Zaitov can also now get past David Corps as well to negate that advantage. But things now are starting to feed themselves into the picture a little bit. And Stanaway is very slow on um, a heavy fuel load and cold tyres. The Corpse has really been able to build that gap up once again to about two seconds, and this is a, a replica of what we saw at the start of this race, and I think that's what's going to cost Richie Sanaway the chance of getting perhaps even a podium because of that simple fact that his car does not like heavy fuel and cold tyres. 
Yeah, it's still not as bad as if it would be the other way around. So if um, Stanaway would be light and being passed by a heavier fuel car, um, Zaitsev already running away quickly. But it's good for Stanaway to be behind the car, which is a little bit quicker. So he's got kind of a ghost running ahead of him. Something you would aim for, something you would uh, look for if you're just trying to get back into the zone. And it's not going to be long until um, David Korp is going to get a visit from Vasily Zaitsev in his rearview mirrors. So um, he's not exactly lost much to the rear, um, to the front, sorry, but in time he's lost a second. But uh, it's, it's 25 seconds for Stanaway now and 43 minutes done in this race. So we've uh, got a little bit more than half of the race done here. And it's really just way too close to really see which strategy is the superior one. However, well, we may not forget we've got about half of the field on the one stop and half of the field on the two stop. And these four drivers are the only ones... Okay, maybe we count Enzo Bonito who has been a bit unlucky to that, but these five drivers were the only ones going to make this work. So on, if you're on the one stop, if you're on the two stop, it doesn't really matter. It's going to be one of these five drivers once again. And it, just, it shows just that these five drivers not really going on the strategy are the ones going to make the victory today. Indeed, and it's we're about 10, 15 laps to really try to figure this one out. And uh, let's not forget that the two stopping guys have got the advantage of being on pressure tyres for these last couple of laps as well. So, still a lot to play for. You are currently on um, lap number 28. In fact, Modigar DD Pilo about to put his 28th lap in the book of 47 here at Road America. You are watching the sixth round of the Irish.com Pro Series of Road Racing. The last race before the Christmas break in Modgar GT Philo. I have to come back to him. He has been so close on a number of occasions to taking victory in the Pro Series. He has had a great season, but hasn't had a win to his name. And Modgar right now really is turning that wick up. He's got that gap of 2.8 seconds over Emil Spindel. And when you compare the time to David Corpse, 25 seconds. Right now, Modgar GT Philo. He's looking as though he's going to try and win this race. Yeah, Filho, of course, uh, not really having a long pit stop, so he's only going to get fuel for another 15 laps, we suspect. So um, it's not going to be a long haul at the pit stop. Still, he's got the long pit road to cover, um, only going 45 miles an hour, of course. As Spindle behind him is struggling, he's down to three seconds, and uh, Bonito is down to 8.4. So it just shows Moga Filho is currently the fastest guy in the field, as David Cobbs is being attacked by Vasily Taichev, and that just happened a bit off camera. So we need to show you replay of that. Vasily Taichev, however, is now past Davide Korb into fifth position. And uh, Richie Stanaway not lost anything. He's right at the tail of both of them. Now Davide Korb lost a bit of time and it's all back to normal. And it's going to be Taichev chasing down Yudai and Rumi now. As both of them are on a two-step strategy. Indeed. And replay coming up on your screen as we speak. And for Zaytaf, he is, of course, on a much lighter fuel load. And I've talked all race long about how the Corps and Stanaway cannot push their cars too hard, too early on. Coming down into turn number six underneath the Corvette bridge, Zaytaf there, very close there to hitting the side of David Corps, but he gave him just enough room, able to complete the pass as they came into turn number seven. Um, already, Zaytaf was clear by about half a second. And this is the thing, Zaytaf working his way back to the field, he had a horrible string of luck there being stuck behind um, Ryan Terpstra and Fabio De Carmo early on in this race. But Zaytaf is now back up into the fifth position, 27 seconds behind the race leader, and he's going to have to make himself for one more pit stop. He will probably feed into about 12th, 13th position, and he started this race in seventh for Zaytaf. He's one of those drivers where the two-stop strategy didn't work for him. Where well, the two-stop strategy is working, however, is one more guy, DD Philo, as there was a car, actually. There was a lot of smoke there on turn number eight. I'm trying to figure out who it was, but all the cars are still circulating on the racetrack who were earlier. Um, checking in on Paul Lilbreg, he's currently four laps down. He's one of these drivers just trying to make up some positions at the moment. Down in the 25th position, really just trying to nurse that car home. And meanwhile, um, Yoni Tamana, in fact, in the 11th position, um, in the 77 car. Something's happened to someone somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Termale is past Simon Cattell as um, this is also a battle between the strategies. So Cattell being on the one stop 
looking good at the moment. He's only pitched in lap 24, so he's got a good run so far. However, it's not really surprising that Termola is faster. He is on the two-stop strategy as well as Christian Laurent ahead of him. Jesper Peterson ahead of him, also on the two-stop strategy. Very strong race from Jesper. He's, um, in fact, just gaining on Stanway and the Corps. So um, he might even get a strong result in the top 10 here. If you're tuning in right now here on Glacier TV, you're watching the iRacing Pro Series on Road America. And if you need a little bit of an overview and you've completely lost track of who's been in the pits or who's not, go to isowc.org slash live. This is our live timing. You get lots of information there about who is leading the fastest lap times, the last lap times, and also the amount of pit stops. However, we are currently entering the 31st lap and um, it's not going to be long for the two stoppers to go into the pit road again, about five laps of time. And then we're going to see which strategy is really working here. Until then, it's going to be a difficult thing to say who's fastest, who's going to get the most superior strategy here. We can tell you right about the race leader still is Brazilian Mogafilo. Strong race for Moga so far, three seconds ahead of Emil Spindle. 9.2 down in third position is Enzo Bonito. And with Hyundai Narumi and Vasily Taichev, we're completing the top five. And then we've got Davide Korps and Richie Stanaway in 6th and 7th, being almost exactly 30 seconds down, and the first one's on a one-stop strategy. And I'm actually going to throw the curveball in here. I think the top five are going to be in this order. Filo taking victory, spin down second, and then we're going to have Davide Korps in 3rd, Richie Stanaway in 4th, Enzo Benito in 5th. Um, because I think right now that the top two drivers and the two-stop strategy have made it all work for them. Spin down just in the comfort zone to be able to take home that second position if he's able to get a little bit of pace on the second part of his fuel run. Um, meanwhile, Jeff Pedersen actually is catching Richard Stanaway in the 72 car. The gap between those two drivers about a second on the racetrack. And for Pedersen if, and, and Stanaway, if Stanaway can just let him pass, it'll be a lot easier rather than him trying to fight him off because once he starts fighting, he'll fall back from the rear of David Corpse. And this is about the sixth, seventh, and eighth position on the racetrack. David Corpse is in sixth. He has made himself the one stop and is on a one stop strategy as Paul Ilbrink wins that car back out of pit road once again. And uh, I'm sure the first racing shoe is going to have a little bit of an issue with him driving that damaged race car. Um, but. Yeah, David Corps, one-stop strategy, Stanaway, one-stop strategy, Jasper Pedersen on a two-stop strategy, and we expect pit stops to start in the next couple of laps for these two-stop drivers, and we're going to finally get that confirmation, can Philo get out ahead of David Corps, which is Stanaway, I say yes, and I say yes, the same for Emil Spindel, Enzo Benito is the one I'm a little bit concerned about, I think he's going to fall in right behind these two drivers. Yeah, and still it's going to be very difficult then for David Corp and Richie Stanway to fight against Enzo Bonito. He's going to get the better set of tyres, he's going to get a comparable amount of fuel, but he's going to have the setup set up for the lower amount of fuel, so he's going to get faster lap times, as Morgan Filo will come down pit road this time, question mark, yes he is, and we're yeah. expecting Ines Filo to go no, one or won't. two laps longer. Yeah, because of course Filo put in less fuel, on that first stop, we talked to him, he only said that he was 0.8 seconds shorter on the fuel tank. This means that um, Spindel has got maybe two laps to try and get the job done. And I think that Spindel right now has got to set his fastest laps of the race. And of course, he was a little bit further back um, than he's been previously in this race. So Philo right now has really got to make sure he has an absolutely picture-perfect stop. And I talked about how Fido, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. This is his one chance. Now, if he can get this pit stop and get back out, this is going to be the critical factor. David Corps is coming out of pit row. Um, sorry, out of the front straight away. He is ahead of my guy, D.D. Fido, as is Richie Stanaway. So, actually, Fido back onto the racetrack. And he's about four or five seconds behind these two cars of three cars. Sorry, Jesper Pedersen, who hasn't pitted, then Richie Stanaway and David Corps. So it turns itself on its head yet again, and Fido actually in very ragged turn two, as he's now really trying to push that race car. Yeah, it looks like we're going to get the battle on the track for the race victory here. David Corp and Richie Stanaway, your leading cars on the one-stop strategy in sixth and seventh position overall. Emil Spindel currently leading, going to pit supposedly this or next lap together with second position Enzo Bonito. And really, Fijo is not really that far away. He's got the guys inside. He's got Jesper Peterson and um, Richie Stanaway and David Corp inside. Peterson suspected for a pit stop this lap as well. He's also on a two-stop strategy. And then we've got the battle on track, really. We've got the corpse leading when all have got pitted. Stanaway in second and Filho in third. And we've got Emil Spindel, who's um, one guy to stay out here. 
Uh, Enzo Bonito currently down pit road. So Spindle will be fourth, Bonito will be fifth, and it's all back to normal. It's just like they've all run the same strategy. Not really, um, yeah, a plus or a minus for any of them, as, uh, yeah, it looks like it might even work for Filho and Spindle there, as, uh, of course, they've got the better strategy this time, and... Yeah, yeah, still three seconds to make, make up for up. Spindle and Filho, so it's it's nothing is decided yet. Yeah, and Enel Spindle is flying at the moment. That last lap time, a 1 minute 35.446. His second fastest lap of the race. He's been flying these past couple of laps, actually. Working his way down into turn at number six, underneath that Corvette bridge, and flick that car to the right-hand side into turn number seven. Spindle really has to put every single ounce he has into this car over these next two laps. He's actually a little bit rugged. Once again, at the final corner, on that lap, when he did the 1 minute 35.4, that would have actually been his fastest lap of the race. And he managed to nail that final corner. It's been a bit of a bugbear for him all day. We talked about how it hurt in the qualifying. He's hurt a little bit in this race here as well today. He's coming down into Canada Corner. We expect him to pit this time by, if not, at the very latest, in one and a third lap time. Into Canada Corner, he comes. Emil Spindown in the 33 CFT Azure machine. All the crowd behind him at the moment. In fact, the crowd are pretty much split behind him and, and between himself and Modco DG Fido. But the Spindale fans have risen to their fate. And will he come into pit road this time? By indeed he does. So this will be Emil Spindale making his second and final pit stop of the day perfectly into pit road. He was great the first time. He was great the second. Modco DG Fido, he's working his way round the back straightaway now, down into Canada Corner. He has got it all to do now on this last sector to try and stay ahead of the 33 car of Emil Spindel. Spindel working his way into pit road 45 miles an hour. He's going to enter his pit box. He's going to have to have the pit stop of his life. Nail that line as you come in, Spindel. Don't overshoot into his pit box. He is now going to take himself four fresh tyres, top up with race gas as well. Behind him, DT Filo. Up the hill he comes. It looks as though Filo is going to keep that race lead. Spindel comes back out, almost brings that tyres there, but Filo is going to get out crucially. It looks as though behind Spindel, and Spindel overtakes their mod guard GT Filo, and this is really now going to be an amazing last couple of laps, Marius. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Spindle has been down almost three seconds before the pit stop, and he's just got the pit stop of his life, really. 5.2 against 5.9 seconds. So Filho still got the good tyres now, he's got the he heated up, so this lap will be critical for Spindle. Filho is still um, yeah, too far away to make the attack here, and they are both just two seconds down the race leaders here. The order is being restored this time by fifth position Enzo Bonito, down by about eight, nine seconds, so he's out of this battle. It's just going to be Decorp, Stanaway versus Filho and Bonito, and I wonder if they even work together on this, this is just absolutely insane. This is, this is by far the best ending we have had to a Pro Series race in God knows how long. Road America always produces some dramatic finishes and today we're going to get it in pit road, we're going to get it on the racetrack as well. We have seen the two different strategies working together. We've seen David Corpus and Richard Stanley on the one top track having to manage their cars, getting past the people, but having to get themselves hit in their lap belt. We've seen with, um, Enzo Benito, um, Marco DG Filo and Emil Spindel, they have had to really hassle their car every single lap. And I have to say, watching Emil Spindel on his in-lap was just mesmerizing. The gap between those two drivers is going to come across the line this time by. It is about two and a half seconds by the look of it. We're going to get confirmation right about now. 3.4 seconds, sorry, on the racetrack um, with... The, the 12 laps left to go in this race, David de Corp to Richie Stanaway are going to be charged down so quickly as Yudan Rumi is on to pit road. Yeah, Yudan Rumi, strong race from him. We haven't really talked about him much, but he's going to go back to sixth position just ahead of Christian Lorente in seventh. Um, in fact, uh, sorry, Simon Cattell has not been in pits yet. He's one of the guys on a one-stop strategy. Also, PJ Sturgis passed right now on the pit exit. So, um, actually, he's not going to go down into seventh. He's going to go down all the way into eighth. Uh, Simon Cattell and PJ Sturgis, the both drivers from INX Racing, taking sixth and seventh position here. And um, they both made the first uh, the, the one-stop strategy work. Not really as much as the leaders of the race here, but still good enough to take a good position here as they've had a brilliant race on Indianapolis and it looks like it's going to be a solid top 10 finish for both of them again. And I have to say, Emil Spindel has actually built up that gap over my guard DG Filo this past lap and Spindel is on an absolute charge. He can see 
those two cars ahead of him, who he needs to pass and overtake, which is that way, in the 72 car, and David Corpse in the 58, we have got ourselves four drivers who have really epitomised everything about this Pro Series this year, battling for the top four positions on the racetrack. It is currently David Corpse with 36 laps complete at the line, ahead of Richie Stanaway, by just about one second. Emma Spindell, as he comes across the line, will be moved up into third position, and Mudgar DG Dealer up into fourth. Lap times, David Cobbs, a 1 minute 36.6. Richie Stanaway, a 1 minute 36.4. Emma Spindell, a 1 minute 36.0. And, and I have to say, Vila as well, exactly the same lap times within 1 100th of a second. These two guys, Spindell and Philo, right now are charging. Yeah, they really are, and the top four once again separated by 4.4 seconds, and I believe that's the same uh, kind of gap we had about three or four laps in the race, and we're in lap 37. So, um, Philo currently one second slower than Emil Spindel there. He's had good lap times, but the last lap has just been absolutely terrible for him. Um, Emil Spindel almost at the rear of Stanaway and De Corps, and um, yeah. Mogafilo struggling there really 137.0 for him 136.0 for Spindle so uh, it's not really looking that comfortable for him however still in fifth position 10 seconds down the lead so 6.4 seconds down for position Enzo Bonito and um, yeah he's going a little bit sideways once again we're talking about him uh, the commentary effect uh, he's putting a bit of a show on us uh, 10 seconds down the lead he only has to bring this home and it's going to be a solid fifth place finish for Enzo Bonito he's been a bit unlucky in the race uh, just being stuck in traffic and well it's still going to be fifth position for him and that's a great result in the process having a look on board with David de Corps as he has got Richie Stanway actually closing that gap to him now on the racetrack. Emma Spindel coming into play as well. We have got ourselves 10 laps left to go in this. The sixth round of the RAC.com Pro Series of Road Racing. So many stories on this as well. Richie Stanway, of course, in the championship hunt, as is Emma Spindel. David de Corps a little bit further back, but still a factor. Whoever wins this race really is going to have the momentum going into the last three rounds of the season, starting in Watkins Glen in three weeks' time. And the gap now is down to two seconds between the Middle Corps and Emma Spindown in the battle for that first position. Last time by a 1 minute 35.699 for Emma Spindown, two, a 1 minute 36.6 for David Corps, a full second faster. Richie Stanaway actually also faster than the Corps. The gap is now six tenths of a second between those two drivers. <coughs> Monica DT Fieler looking as though he's fallen off just a little bit, but perhaps he knows that these four drivers, once they get battling, these three drivers can get battling on the racetrack, he can come back into play. So we never know what it could be in the mind of that radical driver, of Mudgar DG Velo. But David Corps is uh, actually pulled out a little bit of gap of Stanaway on this lap. Spindell in third, he's now into like 30 years. We're gonna have to see his lap time as they come past the line once again. And do you think Spindell can win it? Yeah, it's a good question, but uh, we'd like to think, um yeah, he could, but uh, he still needs to get past these guys, and he's only got eight laps to go. So, uh, sorry, nine laps to go in fact. So, um, yeah, nine laps at a 6.4 kilometer circuit, uh, still around 50 kilometers. But it's not that much if you're in the car. If you're just behind them running, you need to get close enough to make the pass. And uh, both of these things are really too difficult to achieve. However, to our viewers, 91 of them at the moment. Tell us what you think. Tell us who of the four guys are going to win this race. David Pop, your race leader, over the one hour mark currently this lap by. Richie Stanaway, the New Zealand driver from Team Redline, in second position, only eight tenths down. Emil Spindel in third. The first guys do be on a two stop strategy. Or even Moga Filo is 3.2 seconds down. Not really the fastest of the pack right here, but he's still got a shot at winning. So tell us. Who do you think will take this victory at Road America home? Spindell. Simple. Um, I think. I mean, that gap is 1.6 seconds now between himself and Richie Stanaway. And I have to say, though, Spindell's got to get himself past Stanaway quickly. He's got maybe two laps maximum to do that. Then he's got to close in the rear of David Corps. The Corps just has to hope that Stanaway makes life hard for Emma Spindell. Let's not forget last week at Phillip Island, they had a little bit of a coming together, did Spindell and Stanaway. But these drivers are professionals that is why they're classified as pro drivers they are racing for more than just this race they're racing for that nine race championship as well down 
into Canada Corner. Once again, they go. Lap number 39 of 47 in this race. David Court from Richie Stanaway from Emos Bindel. They are top three. Then Modgo Didi Bilo and Enzo Benito in third and fourth. The Court's going a little bit wide, actually, there, as they came out of Canada. This is going to close things up a little bit more. I have to say, though, we talked about how Spindel's car wasn't the fastest in a straight line. He really has to hope that that car works in traffic now to have any chance of winning this race. We're going to get a very good chance to have a look at this now. But they come past the line once again. Spindel setting himself a 1 minute 36.1 um, to which is Stanaway's 1 minute 36.3. Stanaway, 190 miles an hour. In fact, though, he's Spindel a full 3 miles an hour faster as he came down to turn number 1. So Spindel has got to really hassle that car for these next couple of laps. And right now, I'm, it's looking a lot harder for Spindel now he's into that dirty air. And thinking that if David Corpson just keep it on a straight line, keep it going, he could just take victory, but we could have a last lap um, run down to Canada Corner almost. Yeah, but um, David Corpson has been really fighting against Stanaway for all the race long, so um, he's used to Stanaway really, but he's not used to Spindle, and as soon as Spindle might get past Stanaway, it's going to be a lot more difficult than just against Stanaway. Because it's going to be the faster spindle right behind them, and it's going to be Stanway who's not really that much slower. So, um, Filho closing in at the moment, 36.0 last lap, finally found his pace again. So the top three are separated by less than 2.5 seconds this time by, and um, it might even benefit David Corbett at the top, really. One second between him and Richie Stanway at the moment, and as soon as Stanway and Spindle start fighting, he might be the lucky third in this, and he might break free, and then it's just a question about what Philo will do. He's still involved in this, and I can't really see anything. It's, it could be anything out of this. And I have to say as well, behind that, there is a two wide, two deep action going into the kink. And that was in the battle for the 19th position. You had Thiago Ferro, Fabio De Carmen, Ryan Turkshire, we got Martin all involved in that. And what's been down, he's looking a lot closer as they come down to turn number one once again. Is he going to try and make the move? He's moving to the right-hand side. He just did a little dodge there. He wasn't going to be close enough, but he's now got to keep that momentum. Don't do anything too early, too rash, because other way, you're going to have to do that momentum all over again. Get yourself a good one through turn number two. We're going to go on board with spin down now as he comes underneath that um, Santango bridge. Now working his way down to turn number five. He won't get the run down here, but it's going to be very close. You see, he's already looking down to the left-hand side, um, and this is where the dirty air really comes into effect. He's got to make sure he can hold it together through the second part of the lap. This is now underneath the Corvette Bridge into turn number six, and you're flat out pretty much through here into turn seven. Really have to hassle the car through there. Um, and right now, it's looking this way, like Moko GT Filo is starting to come back into the picture as well. And he's closed that gap to Emma Spindel that last lap by quite a slight margin. Ooh, and Spindel going very sideways here in the carousel. And that's going to just get Philo closer and closer as Stanway gets the breathing space he wants. One deep breath as uh, Spindel is going to be right at his tail again at the finish straight. So um, it just shows that they started fighting a little bit, just two little maneuvers, um, trying to show in the mirror of Richie Stanway for Emil Spindel there. And David Korb is away by almost two seconds, 1.5 last time by, but he's had um, a little bit gained this lap. So. It's going to be one thing, really. It's going to be Stanaway against Spindle at first, and then it's still a question if Spindle gets past. Um, he's obviously going to be quick at the tail of the court, but it's going to be difficult passing here. We, we really see that at the moment, and um, he's still not even past Stanaway yet. 41 laps scored complete in this race, and it is still David Corpse from Richie Stanaway from ML Spindle, and Modgar GT Filo right back into the picture as well. And now it is that four-way battle it is looking more and more that David de Corp can come away with this race victory. And it all comes back, actually, to when de Corp and Stanaway made their pit stop. Because de Corp was able to get out, and I'm talking literally half a car length ahead of Richie Stanaway. Stanaway was always slow in those first couple of laps. And that's what really was able to get David de Corp, that gap he needed to come back out ahead of Emma Spindel and Modgar DG Filo. These, this is by far the best battle we have had in Pro Series all season long. You've got de Corp and Stanaway on old tyres, they're all done about the same fuel loads now, but Spindel and Pilo have got themselves much fresher tyres on their cars. Stanway actually went a little bit wide there, um, just before the carousel, and this is going to make things interesting as they come down the hill, now into Canada Corner. Spindel, if you can get a good run in this last lap, he could try and set himself up for a pass into turn number one, but he's got to be close, literally hugging the rear of Stanaway's car as they come out of the final corner. 
close into Canada, but not quite close enough. And it is going to be very close up this run up the hill. Spindel in third, Kilo in fourth. And you see a little bit of a wiggle actually from both Stanaway and Spindel as they work away into the final corner. Is it going to be this time by a good run actually out of the final corner for Stanaway? And Spindel has got it all to do once again in third. Yeah, and it's psychologically one big thing. A couple of laps ago after the pit stop, it's been the question for Amy Spindel. Have I got the shot at winning this? Have I got the shot? Definitely the car will be faster, but he's just not getting past. And as the laps go by, we are already in lap 43 or 47. It is the question now, will I get second position? Because Davide Kopp still your leader in the race here, 1.2 seconds ahead of Richie Stanaway. It's... Um, yeah, it's really just a question of getting past Stanaway at first, and he's doing such a hard job at that. He's getting closer and closer every time into turn one and turn five, but he's never had even a remote chance at overtaking. He's putting him under pressure, but Stanaway should be used to that from real-life Formula racing, so he's not really um, yeah, a newcomer to pressurize from the rear. But Philo is still in that battle, so as soon as they start to, um, to do mistakes, or as soon as they start battling, Philo might be the lucky third in this. Um, meanwhile, we have some action a little bit further back to the field. We get confirmation of who that was. Um, this is, let's say, taking all of our attention away. As meanwhile, Christian Lorente and Marcus Caton, they're having themselves a battle for 14th and 15 positions. Lorente gets slapped loose there out of turn number two. Um, unfortunately, our cameras have been on this four-way path for because we know the second we get away from it, something's going to happen. So perhaps we should actually go away from it for a moment. But a little bit wide once again. Um, and... It is still Spindel trying to close down Richard Stanaway and um, Modgo GG Filo is still in that hunt there in the fourth position. If anyone makes a mistake, he will move himself back up into a podium position. But Spindel, as close as he's been, once again, and I have to say that Stanaway being in that 1.2 second gap makes it very difficult for Spindel to try and make that pass into turn number one. If the corpse, this is the merciful part about it, if the corpse was actually about four turns from a second ahead, then Spindel would have already been passed. Yeah, he really would, and he's still getting the good run out of the last turn, and now it might be the chance, as Richie Stanaway does not get a good run out of the third turn here, so if Spindle gets the run down to turn five now, but he's, he's just too far away. It's just, he's getting the slipstream really when he's coming down to about 300, 280 kilometers, but then the straight is almost over, so he would either need a longer straight or to get a really massively good run out of the turn. Meanwhile, the gap between Stanaway and the leader is only one second as now Stanaway with a little mistake here and Spindle is right at his tail as there's the lap car on the left so oh. now the chance for Spindle the chance is there but Stanaway not impressed by that he holds his senses together not making any mistake here and I was just about to say that the corpse has lost a bit of his gap and well now it's just back again so it's just about 1.5 seconds between the corpse and Stanaway and we've got three laps to go guys we've got three laps left to go and Spindel is close as he has ever been. Modgo GG Filo as close as he has ever been. Working away down to Canada corner once again. And my God. And the corpse once again very wide as well. Could this be that the corpse ties the time to play that talked about? Uh, on that first pit stop, Stanaway gained a ton of time on those last couple of laps. The corpse might have to push that car a little bit too hard. We have got ourselves now three laps left to go. And I don't know how I'm going to survive this bit, but the corpse is still ahead of Stanaway. The gaps they come past start finish line, 1.1 second. Spindel in four, four times per second behind Richie Stanaway. DG Fio a further four times per second back. Spindel getting a good run once again out of turn number one. He's really got to get a perfect turn two, however. I think turn one is out of the question. He's going to have to do it into turn five, turn six, or into Canada. That is perhaps going to be his only chance left to go. However, David Corpse, if he can keep it together, He's got this race which is currently in the bag as a good run down into turn five for both those drivers. Really closing back up again is Emil Spindel as they come underneath that Corvette bridge. He's not going to make a move there, but he is so close as they're working away down into turn number seven. This fast right hand flick. He won't try and make a pass down into turn break because it is really single file down there, but it's really hotting up. And I think right now both Stanaway and the Corpus tyres are starting to fade. Yeah, absolutely, and it just shows that the slower kind of turns are hurting Richie Stanaway and David Corps here. But at the moment, I really think that the Corps has the shot at winning this. He's only got two laps to go, and Spindle will now try everything he can to make the pass. Um, as talking about passes, also Yudai Rumi's got back into seventh position after overtaking 
not only Vesely Tychev, but also PJ Sturgis, who's been one of the one stoppers here. Uh, so seventh position for Yudai Rumi here. But our focus lies, of course, on the battle for the lead. And it was once again the shot here as Spindle comes down the last turn. He's been too close. And if you're running too close behind another car into the turn, you're obviously not going to get the run out of it. And that's exactly not what Spindle needs. And we're in the penultimate lap here. David Korb, still your race leader, 1.4 seconds ahead of Stanaway. So David Korb just has to bring this home. It's his really his action now there's nothing else he can do um, he can bring this home out of his own power so stand away and spindle si uh, starting to fight here once again it's once again not going to be enough down to turn five and spindle is um, yeah he's really getting a little bit angry here he's almost weaving every straight here trying to put stand away under pressure i just hope he's not going to do something uh, risky here or something um, yeah a little bit too risky in fact so he's not going to take Stanaway out here but Filho is still in that battle he's trying to just wait for the move and trying to capitalize on it indeed yes one and a half laps left to go it is still David Corp your race leader Richie Stanaway in second spin down in third it is desperate times for Stanaway he's had a couple of moments when he's really had to defend Emil Spindel has got really himself now four chances left to make a pass we're coming down to the first one but he's not going to be anywhere near close enough We've forgotten about Modgo DT Rio who sat in that fourth position. If anything happens between these drivers, then he will move himself up into a podium position. Spindel looking very close into Canada Corner, but he's not going to be close enough. He needs to be just a car length or so closer. Then he'd have the chance to make a pass. But this is the critical corner they're coming up into now. Turn number 14. He needs to get himself a perfect, perfect corner here. You see him taking a different line there. Nice exit for him, still a little bit too far back. This time by the white flag in hand. One more lap to go for David Corp to get victory. Richie Stanaway in second, spin down in third, Filo in fourth. Spindel not going to be close enough into turn number one. He's going to have to really now try and get a line into turn two, potentially to try and make the pass. And we've got ourselves about three miles of racing left to go. Spindel actually very good out of turn number two. This is as close as he has been working away down the back of the once again. I expect Richie Sadaway, just for the sake of it, will try and go defensively. You see, like, oh, this is it. This is really it now. He's moving down to the left hand side. He's going to have to go the long way. Spindel down the outside. Is he going to try and make the pass? No, he isn't. Spindel is going to get the cut under, however. That is turn six. You see now, Stanway really defending heavily. We've got ourselves about half a lap left to go. Stanway really having to handle that car. While this is all happening, however, Danny de Court has pulled out the advantage he needs to do to try and take victory in this race. Spindel has been stuck behind Richard Stanway ever since that mid stop. They closed the gap down. They were at one point a full seven tenths of a second a lap faster than the two ahead of them. That dirty air really has made things difficult for them. Having the corpse, however, hasn't put a foot wrong in this race. He has hit every single apex he needed to. He had everything happening. Brindell just maybe one more chance now as they come into Canada Corner. Not going to happen for him. The corpse, if he can just coat this car across the last couple of the corners, He's going to win round number six of the Pro Series of road racing here at Road America, coming up for the final time. He knows he's got it now. Across the line he comes. The Cobbs wins. Stanaway will take home second. Spindel third. Philo fourth. What a race. Yeah, and after one hour, 16 minutes and 30 seconds, you've got the top four of the race separated by 2.183 seconds. And that has been one I, I can't even say one that has been the most interesting race of the season by far an absolutely great drive by David Corps. we may not forget we've been focusing on Spindle versus Stanaway but absolutely brilliant race from the Corp not a single mistake he's held the first position against Stanaway on the pit stop and he's brought it home after 47 laps your race winner David Corps. and David Corps, he did it absolutely perfectly and I said all race long, Marius, he had to just not worry about the cars around him. He knew at some point he was going to get overtaken with such a heavy car and other cars on very low fuel. Really, um, he just drove a perfect race. Richie Stanley, let's not forget as well, if you take away his bad start and you take away his um, black class performance after those couple of laps after the pit stops, he did a pretty faultless race as well, but he really did make it up there. In those last 10 laps, we need to keep the pressure away from Enemar Spindel. I have to say, though, if Spindel got past Danaway, I think he should have won that. He would have won that race because the corpse all over the place in those last couple of laps. Yeah, it really was. And 
it's just once again showing how difficult it is to pass here. And Spindle might have been a bit quicker. He's had the better tyres, in fact. But Standaway, just absolutely brilliant driving. And if you do that, Spindle just had no shot at uh, getting past. And another respect to Spindle and Philo there. They all kept it safe, so not a single contact between those four there. And it just shows how much of good racing you can have if you just keep it clean. And if you can't get past, you just can't really... Yeah, you can't make it. So if, if you don't get past, that's it. You don't, you're not going to get past and don't try anything else. And that's exactly what Spindle did here. We're on air for about another 15 minutes. And we'll talk about overtaking opportunities and where perhaps Spindle went wrong. To run through our, your final race results, David Corps taking victory. One hour, 16 minutes, 29 seconds, 0.565. Richie Stanaway, 1.4 seconds behind him. Then Emil Spindle in third. Then Modgo DG Filo in fourth. Enzo Benito running out your top five. Simon Cattell in sixth. Yudana Rumi in 7th, PJ Sturgios 8th, Vasily Zaitov in 9th, and Jasper Pedersen running at your top 10. Hal Cordasso in 11th, Dave Gielink in 12th, Christian Lorenzo in 13th, Marcus Caton in 14th, Ken Leach in 15th, Jason Lover in 16th, Timo Even in 17th, Jagger Alfaro 18th, Ryan Terps in 19th, Fabio Ducamo running out your top 20. We'll be right back with more post-race reaction after this short video. Time for those most famous words in motorsports. Drivers, stop your engines! So welcome back to Road America and what was by far the most entertaining last third of a race we have seen all season long. David Corpse holding on on a one-stop victory to take, and um, one-stop strategy even, to take victory away from Richie Stanaway in second. And they'll spin down, Modgar, DG, Filo, they did the two-stoppers. They came out behind the Corpse and Stanaway. Spindale tried everything, however, wasn't able to get past Richie Stanaway and have a shot for that race victory. Um, at this time, we would like to welcome into the booth Modgar, DG, Filo. Once again, Modgar, you started this race on pole position. You come home in fourth. At some point, you're going to have to win a race for us. <laughs> Hello, Will. Hello for all that are uh, taking part of this broadcast or uh, watching. Well, uh, I did a good qualify and the uh, race uh, pace was good. But before my first... Um, uh, I believe uh, after my first pit stop, I got behind PJ Sturgeos, and it's very, very difficult to overtake uh, due to the draft model uh, this season. The car lose too much grip uh, when you are behind the driver, and since he was lighter on fuel than me, I couldn't uh, get out of corners close enough to try an overtake. I believe I lost around four seconds behind him. And it was the time I needed to pull out of uh, my second pits ahead of the V. 
So uh, my strategy uh, didn't work uh, due to the track conditions, and I really didn't think that one stop would uh, do the trick. Uh, to one stop works, uh, you really had to get out of uh, the uh, pit um, first position, and that's what Davi could make, and got the victory, and he deserves it. And that first stop, it looked as though you, you learned from the mistake at Philip Island and you took a little bit less fuel. That it did cost you a little bit on that second stop and Spindel was able to blast past you. Had it have been you against Stanaway, do you think that you could have tried to make the pass on him? I don't think I could pass Stanaway uh, for the same reason. Uh, the car gets... To, uh, uh, too much effects from draft. Uh, the time you lose in mid of corners, uh, you uh, don't gain it on straights. So uh, it's very, very difficult to overtake here. And I believe that it will be for all tracks except Spa. So uh, to, uh, I, I think that uh, to win this race, I would have to go out of beat. On first position, I had the car to do that, but unfortunately, those are things that happens in races. So uh, again, I thought I had the car to uh, win the race, but well, uh, at least uh, I didn't get a bad result. Although uh, a Stanway did uh, eight points more than me. So I have to watch out if I still think on winning this championship. And you've got yourself a two-week break now to regroup and get yourself prepared for Watkins Glen in three weeks' time. Can you... I mean, you've had some great pace all season, and I think the only thing that's really stops you from really getting into this first place in, in the championship has been a win. Can you try and get yourself a win in Watkins Glen in three weeks' time? Well, Lockheed News Glen is a track where I need to improve a bit. So I will press, uh, let's see if I can get the one or two tenths I need to be com competitive with Stanaway. I know that Team Redline has a very good car on bumpy tracks, and this is the case of Lockheed Glen. So I will have to work out. <laughs> Uh, win next race, but as I, I say, uh, you, uh, it's hard to preview what will happen uh, on the race, so I try to do my job, do a good preparation, uh, and let's see what, it, uh, what will happen next race. Well, Guy GG Philo coming home in the fourth position. Now turning our attention to the podium finishes very quickly. For all of you people wondering why Richie Stanaway is in, on the results down in 21st position, that's complete bolded out. He is a third, second place finisher here today. We'll come back to that one in a moment. But meanwhile, David the Corpse, welcome to Victory Lane. Race victory, well done. And the one stop strategy work for you. Uh, hope you can hear me, guys. <laughs> and, just about. Uh, I just configured my team speak, as I promise. Uh, if I will, uh, I will stop team speak. Uh, seeing you guys. Uh, well, uh, I'm just, I'm just dead now. <laughs> uh, I, I never thought uh, the strategy could could work, but uh, well. Uh, I was the the first guy to be surprised to to be in first position at the at the end of the race. And I think that the the way it worked, so the way it works was that one stop strategy. You had to really manage your own race, and we saw you getting passed by a couple of drivers on lighter fuel at certain points. Were you worried at any point that you'd made a big mistake at all, or did you know that if you'd done anything you could, you could have got yourself up there, which you did. Well, uh, I really I really thought it could be a, a huge mistake to, to try only one pit, but uh, well, I just tried to to work my way and uh, I tried to let pass the, the guys faster than me, 
because uh, obviously uh, they were they were going on a, on a two bit strategy. So uh, I tried not to lose too much time uh, by letting them by. And well, uh, I started to think it could work. Seeing uh, I could really have a nice tint uh, in clean air, so uh, I could push uh, pretty nicely. Uh, apart from some some drivers that that passed me uh, at some point, but well, uh, well, finally in clean air, uh, maybe it could work. And uh, and seeing I was first uh, after the the guys pitted uh, for their second pit, uh, I knew it could really be done. So I had to to push like a dog, <laughs> really. And I think the critical part of that race was when you were able to get out ahead of Richie Stanaway after your pit stops. It was very close, but were you worried that he would leapfrog, leapfrog you on pit road, especially um, after he had a great stop at Phillip Island last week to do exactly the same thing? Well, yeah, I was pretty worried uh, because uh, I, I'm not sure I didn't uh, I was configuring him speak. I couldn't hear uh, other people, but... Uh, I think it just uh, it just followed me in, uh, in the pit as he, he thought maybe uh, my strategy was working. And so uh, when, when I saw him uh, jumping in the pit, uh, I knew uh, I really had to, to make a great stop at my, my pit style. And, and well, well, it was really, really close and I'm, <laughs> I'm really pleased it worked. And in three weeks' time, we head over to Watkins Glen for the last third of the season. Watkins always a track which creates great spring and also great strategy options as well. Can you make it two in a row in three weeks' time? Well, it's really hard to tell. Uh, there's a lot of work on, uh, on the setup uh, to, to be on the podium, really. And uh, with our own team, we could uh, well, we could do a, a truck setup for this race, so I could I could be pretty fast with some fuel load. Uh, but in Watkins Glen, uh, I'm not sure it will be the same. So we will we we will really have to to be really careful with the setup and and try to do it uh, really nicely. And that is David de Corp taking his first victory of the Ariesen.com Pro Series of Road Racing. Richie Stanaway comes home in second after winning, of course, the last two races at Silverstone and Phillip Island, respectively. Richie, welcome back to the podium. However, this time you're just one step a little bit further down. It was very close for you as well, but you had to fight those last 10 laps. Yeah, it was a very difficult uh, final 11 laps especially because I spent most of the second stint quite close behind Davey. So um, I used up a lot of my tires where I should have really been trying to conserve them. So, um, yeah, the last 10 laps was really difficult. Um, I was having doubts whether or not I could maintain my position. But, uh, yeah, fortunately, I um, was just able to hold on for second position there. But, uh, yeah, congrats to Davey on the win. Um, I think we both made the right decision to do the one-stop strategy uh, I think it was the the better way to go so yeah I mean um, obviously I was a little bit disappointed with my start um, being a little bit heavier than everybody else I you know I expected a you know slow getaway but not that slow I lost a lot of positions and I was already four seconds off the lead after the first lap which is not what I needed to to uh, you know be able to fight for the win and obviously um, losing the position to Davey at the start as well kind of ruined the race for me but um, anyway it was a still a good result to finish second as uh, you know good points for the championship and uh, yeah not a not a bad result today and having a look at you know you start and then your first couple of laps after the pit stop it seemed as though on full fuel with cold tires that car was an absolute dog to handle um, was it as bad as it was looking from our screens and um, was that perhaps what you think was a limiting factor for you to get yourself back onto the top step of the podium? Um, I think most of the problems on the the high fuel was just that I didn't have any clean air to, to run in. Um, and I also made the mistake of only using a 303 kilometer per hour seventh gear, which uh, restricted me to any, any possibility to overtake. Um, because I didn't think it would be necessary um, at all to overtake during the race, but um, turns out the ratio was way too short anyway. Um, 
so yeah i spent most of the the race in dirty air which um kind of uh you know made me run my pace quite a bit slower than than what i was probably capable of and um that's probably why the the car looked like a bit of a handful when i was um running in behind people but um somehow we managed to get the car to work uh really well with a lot of fuel on board this week so um that's why we decided to go for the one stop strategy but um yeah it certainly was a, a difficult race anyway and you talk about you know that very short seventh gear we did allude to it on the broadcast that you were one of the slower drivers in a straight line of course that's only one part of a big picture um was it where would you have wanted to be at the end of lap one um to try and get that race victory i think if i just had a been uh, probably another two or three positions further up than than what I dropped back down to, um, and if I had a little bit of clean air to run at my own pace, it would have been uh, would have been enough. Um, you know, there was just lots of times during the race where uh, where I lost big big pieces of time, um, and I think that you know in order to have to have um, you know had a a good chance of winning, I needed just to have um, you know no points during the race where I was. Um, going slower than the pace I would normally run at. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was just um, just a matter of um, you know trying to you know make the best of what the situation was, and also um, I was actually considering after the first stint that I'd lost so much time that that um, I might have even come out of the the first pit stop behind the the leaders. Um, sorry, after the second pit stop, but um through the middle phase of the race it didn't actually turn out too bad and um obviously we managed to make the strategy work so uh, it was definitely a close call though and this is only provisional because i haven't got the official results ahead of me but by doing my mental math you are ahead in the championship heading into watkins Glen in three weeks time and how important is it for you to have that championship lead with the last three races left to go and a bit of a break yeah, it's nice to have a bit of a lead, but it doesn't really change the approach at all. Um, you know, I just focus at, you know, taking it each race at a time and, um, you know, trying to get the maximum performance on, on each race weekend. But, um, you know, it's obviously good to, to have a lead um, with three races to go. Unfortunately, I've already sort of used up my drop week after I got uh, flipped over on the first lap and Motegi, so that sort of count will count as obviously my drop week, so I can't afford to have any any other um, you know bad finishes. So it would have been nice to have had a good result in Motegi to know that I had a you know a buffer of a drop week to use. But um, yeah, I'll just have to focus on having a strong final three races, and um, obviously my aim is to win the championship. So um, yeah, I mean we'll try and prepare as best as possible for Watkins Glen and hopefully have a, a strong final three races. And that is Richie Stanaway. He came home in the second position, continuing his championship charge and moving himself up into first place in the charge for the Iriston.com Grand Prix World Championship Series 2013. Moving on to a driver who unfortunately didn't have the luck go his way today, Paul Ilbrink. Um, you've had yourself a tough old race. You had a coming together with um, Yoni Tamala um, um, in turn number seven, and ever since then, it was just a case of trying to make up laps. Take us through the incident and take us through your race up until that point. Um, yeah, it was a bit unfortunate today. I uh, had a good start, made up some positions, and after that, everybody was making a couple of mistakes, and I lost a couple of positions again after winning them at the start. And uh, I had a couple of guys in front of me going off. Uh, it was Timu and uh, Max. And then once I ran wide at turn six and I resumed track and Yona was really close behind me, but I didn't really expect him to make a move there because uh, there isn't really much room to overtake in turn seven, but he did anyway. And there was a little bit of room even for him to do that, but he overshot the corner a bit, and that's basically ended my race. And when you feed it into the whole championship perspective, the whole top 25 deal, it was a case today just trying to turn laps, and he finished the race eventually in the 25th spot. I mean, 
moving on to the next three weeks, I'm guessing you're just hoping for some better luck right now, even though you're not in the shop for the championship. Yeah, it's just, yeah, keeping it on track and trying to avoid incidents like this, but, uh, yeah. Maybe if I was prepared a bit better, I would have had more pace and wouldn't get into such situations, but, yeah, that's just it. And three weeks' time, Watkins Glen, looking forward? Uh, I'm looking forward to the break, to be honest, so... I'll see after that uh, how Watkins Glen will go. 10-4, Paul will break, unfortunately, coming down in the 25th position. And that kind of rounds up our coverage of this, the sixth round of the Irish.com Pro Series of Road Racing. One more time, it was David Corp taking victory in a stunning battle with Richie Stanaway, Emma Swindell and Modgar DG Filo. The top four drivers separated by less than two and a half seconds on the racetrack. And don't need to rounding out your top five. Of course, we have got ourselves Proto Ice once again tonight, this time at Phillip Island. Um, I would like to very quickly bring in Glacier TV's own Yoni Backman into the discussion on this. Yoni, we ran at Phillip Island a couple of weeks back in the Pro Series. Um, this time, however, we're in the NMP2 cars, and it's very similar in some ways, very diff um, different in others. However, it's going to be a crazy old race. Yeah, especially the Heat 2. Uh, since the slowest guy, slower cars uh, being in front and the faster guys behind and the, the car the track being fast and uh, possibly uh, low down for setup being utilized by most of the teams. It's going to be crazy. And that will be coming to you this evening. Start time, 8.30 p.m. GMT with Liam Jenkins and Marius Gollenbeck because I'm taking a well-earned rest for once in my life. Um, and they'll be, say, two 30-minute sprint races. For those of you who's never seen Pro Toys before, they qualified, they won a race for 30 minutes, then they invert the top 20 drivers, and then those top 20 drivers start from first position, start 20th, 20 position starts first, and then they do it all over again for another 30 minutes. Philip Island playing host to the... Protowise $1,000 championship. They've only got themselves three more races left to go, and that'll be tonight from 8.30 p.m. GMT. Meanwhile, this has been the sixth round of the Irish.com Pro Series of Road Racing. I've been Will Vincent. That's been Marius Gone and Back Journey. Back on cameras. A very good afternoon and a very Merry Christmas as well. I can tell you about iRacing's precision engineered cars. I can tell you about iRacing's authentically detailed tracks. I can tell you about iRacing's incredibly satisfying physics. But what I can't tell you is what it's like to be part of this.